Guest speaker, Joe Kiari Gudzama, founding principal partner, JK Gudzama LLP. Chairman, Prince Clem Agwa, Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Date, Tuesday, 28th June, 2022. Time, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. Other programs include Welcome Cocktail and Reception. Date, Tuesday, 28th June, 2022. Time, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Host, Board of Fellows, Abuja, FCT and Nasarawa State. Mid-Year Meeting. Date, Wednesday, 29th June, 2022. Time, 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Dinner and Award Night. Chairman, His Excellency, Dr. Muazuba Mangida Aliyu, Chief Servant and Former Executive Governor of Niger State. Time, 6.30 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. This event will be streamed live on Zoom and Farmer Stream TV YouTube channels. Announcer, Pharmacist Larry Familusi, FPSN, Secretary, Board of Fellows. Pharmacist Tanko Ibrahim Oyuba, FPSN, Chairman, Planning Committee 2022. The Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, presents her fourth public lecture 2022. Topic Harnessing the Potentials of Fellows of Professional Bodies in Nigeria for National Development. The Pharmacist's Perspective. Guest speaker, Joe Kiyari Gudzama, founding principal partner, JK Gudzama LLP. Chairman, Prince Clem Agwa, Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Date, Tuesday, 28th June, 2022. Time, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. Other programs include Welcome Cocktail and Reception. Date Tuesday, 28th June, 2022. Time 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Host Board of Fellows Abuja FCT and Nasarawa State. Mid-Year Meeting. Date Wednesday, 29th June, 2022. Time 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Dinner and Award Night. Chairman, His Excellency, Dr. Muazuba Mangida Aliyu, Chief Servant and Former Executive Governor of Niger State. Time, 6.30 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. This event will be streamed live on Zoom and Farmer Stream TV YouTube channels. Announcer, Pharmacist Larry Familusi, FPSN, Secretary, Board of Fellows. Pharmacist Tanko Ibrahim Oyuba, FPSN, Chairman, Planning Committee 2022. The Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, presents her fourth public lecture 2022. Topic Harnessing the Potentials of Fellows of Professional Bodies in Nigeria for National Development. The Pharmacist's Perspective. Guest speaker, Joe Kiyari Gudzama, founding principal partner, JK Gudzama LLP. Chairman, Prince Clem Agwa, Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Date, Tuesday, 28th June, 2022. Time, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. Other programs include Welcome Cocktail and Reception. Date Tuesday, 28th June 2022. Time 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Host Board of Fellows Abuja FCT and Nasarawa State. Mid-Year Meeting. Date Wednesday, 29th June 2022. Time 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Dinner and Award Night. Chairman, His Excellency, Dr. Muazuba Mangida Aliyu, Chief Servant and Former Executive Governor of Niger State. Time, 6.30 p.m. 
venue, Nigerian Air Force Math Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. This event will be streamed live on Zoom and Farmer Stream TV YouTube channels. Announcer, Pharmacist Larry Familusi, FPSN, Secretary, Board of Fellows. Pharmacist Tanko Ibrahim Oyuba, FPSN, Chairman, Planning Committee 2022. The Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, presents her fourth public lecture 2022. Topic, Harnessing the Potentials of Fellows of Professional Bodies in Nigeria for National Development, The Pharmacist's Perspective. Guest Speaker, Jokiyari Gadzama, Founding Principal Partner, J.K. Gadzama, LLP. Chairman, Prince Clem Agwa, Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Date, Tuesday, 28th June, 2022. Time, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. Other programs include Welcome Cocktail and Reception. Date, Tuesday, 28th June, 2022. Time, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Host Board of Fellows Abuja FCT and Nasarawa State. Mid Year Meeting. Date Wednesday, 29th June 2022. Time 8 30 a.m. to 2 30 p.m. Dinner and Award Night. Chairman, His Excellency Dr. Muazuba Mangida Aliyu, Chief Servant and former Executive Governor of Niger State. Time 6 30 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. This event will be streamed live on Zoom and Pharma Stream TV YouTube channels. Announcer, Pharmacist Larry Familusi, FPSN, Secretary, Board of Fellows. Pharmacist Tanko Ibrahim Oyuba, FPSN, Chairman, Planning Committee 2022. The Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, presents her fourth public lecture 2022. Topic, Harnessing the Potentials of Fellows of Professional Bodies in Nigeria for National Development, The Pharmacist's Perspective. Guest Speaker, Jokiyari Gadzama, Founding Principal Partner, J.K. Gadzama, LLP. Chairman, Prince Clem Agwa, Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Date, Tuesday, 28th June, 2022. Time, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. Other programs include Welcome Cocktail and Reception. Date, Tuesday, 28th June, 2022. Time, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Host Board of Fellows Abuja FCT and Nasarawa State. Mid Year Meeting. Date Wednesday, 29th June 2022. Time 8 30 a.m. to 2 30 p.m. Dinner and Award Night. Chairman, His Excellency Dr. Muazuba Mangida Aliyu, Chief Servant and former Executive Governor of Niger State. Time 6 30 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kado Abuja, FCT. This event will be streamed live on Zoom and Pharma Stream TV YouTube channels. Announcer, Pharmacist Larry Familusi, FPSN, Secretary, Board of Fellows. Pharmacist Tanko Ibrahim Oyuba, FPSN, Chairman, Planning Committee 2022. The Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, presents her fourth public lecture 2022. Topic, Harnessing the Potentials of Fellows of Professional Bodies in Nigeria for National Development, The Pharmacist's Perspective. Guest Speaker, Jokiyari Gadzama, Founding Principal Partner, J.K. Gadzama, LLP. Chairman, Prince Clem Agwa, 
Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Date Tuesday, 28th June 2022. Time 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Venue Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center Kado Abuja FCT. Other programs include Welcome Cocktail and Reception. Date Tuesday, 28th June 2022. Time 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Host Board of Fellows Abuja FCT and Nasarawa State. Mid Year Meeting. Date Wednesday, 29th June 2022. Time 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Dinner and Award Night. Chairman, His Excellency Dr. Muazuba Mangida Aliyu, Chief Servant and former Executive Governor of Niger State. Time 6.30 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center, Kadu Abuja, FCT. This event will be streamed live on Zoom and Farmer Stream TV YouTube channels. Announcer, Pharmacist Larry Familusi, FPSN, Secretary, Board of Fellows. Pharmacist Tanko Ibrahim Oyuba, FPSN, Chairman, Planning Committee 2022. The Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, presents her fourth public lecture 2022. Topic. Harnessing the Potentials of Fellows of Professional Bodies in Nigeria for National Development, the Pharmacist's Perspective. Guest Speaker, Joe Kiyari Gadzama. Founding Principal Partner, J.K. Gadzama, LLP. Chairman, Prince Clem Agba, Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Date Tuesday, 28th June 2022. Time 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Venue Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center Kado Abuja FCT. Other programs include Welcome Cocktail and Reception. Date Tuesday, 28th June 2022. Time 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Host Board of Fellows Abuja FCT and Nasarawa State. Mid Year Meeting. Date Wednesday, 29th June 2022. Time 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Dinner and Award Night. Chairman, His Excellency Dr. Muazuba Mangida Aliyu, Chief Servant and former Executive Governor of Niger State. Time 6.30 p.m. Venue, Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center Kado Abuja FCT. This event will be streamed live on Zoom and Pharma Stream TV YouTube channels. Announcer, Pharmacist Larry Familusi, FPSN, Secretary, Board of Fellows. Pharmacist Tanko Ibrahim Oyuba, FPSN, Chairman, Planning Committee 2022. The Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, presents her fourth public lecture 2022. Topic, Harnessing the Potentials of Fellows of Professional Bodies in Nigeria for National Development, the Pharmacist's Perspective. Guest Speaker, Joe Kiyari Gadzama. Founding Principal Partner, J.K. Gadzama, LLP. Chairman, Prince Clem Agba. Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Date Tuesday, 28th June 2022. Time 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Venue Nigerian Air Force NAF Conference Center Kado Abuja FCT. Other programs include Welcome Cocktail and Reception. Date Tuesday, 28th June 2022. Time 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Host Board of Fellows Abuja FCT and Nasarawa State. Mid Year Meeting. Date. Wednesday, 29th June 2022. Time 8.30 a.m. Good morning, everybody. You are all very welcome to this occasion. 
the media meeting and the fourth public lecture of the Board of Fellows of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. I am pharmacist Mrs. Uchiwezo, the Deputy Director of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, and alongside me is my colleague, pharmacist Ellen Cassidy. I'm pharmacist Ellen Eliojo Cassidy, with emphasis on the Eliojo, because I'm a princess of the Igala Kingdom. <laughs> I'm very proud of my culture, and I like, I love to shout it out. That's how we roll. I'm a practicing pharmacist here in Abuja and a proud merit award of the Association of Lady Pharmacists. Mm -hmm. Please, another round of applause for me. <laughs> up, up towards professional excellence. Up, up towards professional excellence. Thank you. So once again, we are all welcome to the media meeting and the fourth public lecture and plenary session of the Board of Fellows of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. I'm proud to be a pharmacist. Yeah. Thank you, my mommy, Professor Mrs. Femi Oyewo. I just call that like, like every regular person. But as a mother, as a past dean, she tutored me. It was from her I took my oath as a pharmacist. So I call her Professor Mrs. Umbang Unyok Femi Oyewo. Momo, Dele Dele Ni. Thank you, mommy. I can help you to get the, the other names correctly. It's Umbang Unyok. Femi Oyewo, and that's the immediate past chairman of the Board of Fellows. Please, another round of applause for her. It's an honor to welcome everybody to this occasion. It's an honor to welcome, in our midst, representatives of our guest speaker, of the chairman of the occasion, the PSM president, I'm yet to cite him, chairman board of fellows who is our chief host this morning, the PSM registrar represented, directors generals, past PSM president sitting, chairman of technical and interest groups of the PSM here present, to 2.30 p.m. Dinner and award night. Chairman, His Excellency. All pharmacies in the house. I also want to specially welcome Alpians in the house. Like my colleague, it looks like it's an Alps day today. Up Alps. Towards professional excellence and service. We have gone to excellence and service. We have moved beyond. We have arrived. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, even gentlemen of the press, you're all welcome to this event. I hand over to my colleague to welcome to the high table our uh, guests that we expect to be up here. I want to welcome to the high table the chief host for today, our very own farm doctor, Chief Joel. Ewuga, Baba Kanzi, Adagazi. PhD, FPSN, FPC Farm, the Chairman Board of Fellow. Ushers, please. Ushers, please. Ah, no, no, no.
That applause was not enough for the chief host of today. Thank you. Also calling up to the high table, the representative of our guest speaker in the person of Chief Joe Kiari Gazama, SAN, OFR, MFR, the founding and principal partner of JK Gazama LLP, able represented by the son, Madhu Joe Kiari, a partner of JK Gazama LLP. Welcome. Madhu Joe Kiari, a partner, LLB, MCI ARB, partner of JK Gazama LLB, and a member of Lincoln's Inn, representing the father here. You are welcome, please. Please, a round of applause for him. While we await the arrival of the PSM president, the PCN registrar, the representative of the FCT minister, the representative of the minister of health, representative of the Minister of Women Affairs. Our royal fathers are still on their way while we are with them. I want to recognize in our midst past presidents of the PSN. I can see our own pharmacies as a big While the others are still coming, fellow FIP, fellow PSN, I should leave those ones. Fellow FIP. You are welcome, sir. The chairman for today's occasion is Prince Clem Agba, the Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. But is here ably represented today by Dr. Philip Ugbodaga, the Special Assistant to the Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Ushers, please welcome Dr. Philip Ugbodaga for me to the ITB. Apologies, sir. Please, it's my honor to recognize in our midst the presence of our past PSM president, Alhaji Yaro Buddha, his pharmacist, FPSN. You're welcome, sir. Right now, we want to go into the program proper. Please, we have the program on page 13. The program is just a guide. It's very flexible, so we'll alternate it as the need may be. So we're going to start with the national anthem. Mm -hmm. Can we please be up?
national have anthem. The first stanza of the national anthem, please. Please, while standing, let's take the second stanza that will serve as the opening prayer. We'll After recite the count it. of we'll three, we're going it. to recite it, please. One, two, three. O oh God of creation, direct our noble course, guide our leaders right, help our youth the truth to know, in love and honesty to grow, and living just and true. Great lofty heights attain to build a nation where peace and justice shall reign. Amen. Amen. Can we please take our seats? I want, to, I want to say that there's something to be said about harnessing the potentials of fellows of professional bodies. We are going through things at this side of the podium because we haven't harnessed those potentials accurately and properly. So we stand and we say we will make efforts to do that better. At this point, I want to recognize he's stepping out, Dr. John Alpha, the Chairman, Board of Directors of the NIPRID. Welcome, sir. At this juncture also, I want to invite to the high table the immediate past chairman, chairperson, of the BOF, Board of Fellows of the PSN, in the person of Professor Mrs. Should I call all the names, Ma? Mbang, Mbang, Femi, Oyero. You're welcome, Ma. MFR. While we we'll continue with re recognitions as we go along, I want us to kickstart this program by inviting pharmacist Ibrahim Tanko Ayuba, the chairman of the committee, the planning chairman of the planning conference planning committee, to please come and give us his welcome address. Conference Planning Committee Chairman. Okay, while we are waiting for him, this house, I can see, is full of persons with a lot of experience, persons who have surmounted life's issues, and so it's of the essence that we learn from such persons. And I think the topic for today is going to be addressing that. But the question is, as experienced as we are, as, as much years we are put into practice, do we recognize that we have something to offer? Or do we just sit back and not recognize that we have something to offer? I leave my conference planning committee chairman to give his welcome address. The chairman of this morning's event, the guest speaker, BOF chairman, past presidents, my elders, my colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. 
I stand before you this morning to give my address as the CPC chairman of this year's media meeting and public lecture. It's my pleasure and honor to welcome you to the public lecture of the annual media meeting of the Board of Fellows of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. We thank God for journey mercies granted all of us who travel from across Nigeria to attend this year's event. The conference planning committee was inaugurated by the chairman of the PSN Board of Fellows, pharmacist Joel Adagazu, on Tuesday, 8 February 2022, via Zoom. The theme for this year's 2022 media lecture is harnessing the potentials of fellows of professional bodies in Nigeria for national development, the pharmacist perspective. The Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Prince Clem Agba, Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, will be the chairman of the fourth public lecture, while Barrister Joel Kiari Gazama, founding principal partner, will be the keynote address speaker. An innovation to this year's conference is a post-lecture plenary and group discussion by fellows from technical groups, including apps. And this session will discuss the fallout from the lecture and identify other key issues that will be critical in enhancing the visibility of fellows of PSN and make recommendations. The plenary will adopt these recommendations and this will form the way forward for BOF. You know, many, I hear many fellows complain that they just are awarded fellows after the ceremony and the induction. They don't see any tangible benefit for being fellows. So we discuss among ourselves and we say, okay, let us come and sit down and discuss what are the things we can do to enhance the visibility and the benefits to fellows of the Society of Nigeria. So when they say you are a fellow, you know there is something tangible that's attached to it, not just you wear this medallion only, so that when you, in the society, you know, that when they say you are a fellow, you know there's an advantage to it. So that's why we want to, so please, I'm appealing to you. As the lecturer is delivering his speech, be taking notes, so that when we meet among ourselves after the lecture, we will not be able to do justice to the topic and come out with points and recommendations that will enhance the visibility of fellows of the Church of Nigeria. With your August presence and the quality of the events and activities put together by this year's CPC and LOC, I'm assured that we are going to experience one of the most remarkable and impactful media meetings of our time. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to use this opportunity to express my profound gratitude to them at God for making things possible the BOF chairman for his effective leadership, and members of the CPC for their efforts and dedication to make the media meeting possible, despite serious challenges due to the economic meltdown. You know, planning requires a lot of money, but we did this planning without money. <laughs> yes, so because of that we had to do most of our meetings online most of our meetings online but despite that we're able to forge on and here we are today i wish all of us a successful informative public lecture and hope the outcome of the post lecture discussions will lead to a more vibrant and visible psn board of fellows thank you very much god bless you Please, a better round of applause. Thank you, sir. That was the address taken by the chairman of the BOF Mid-Year Meeting Planning Committee. That's from Ayuba Tanko Ibrahim, FPSN. The only thing that caught my attention was the fact that they planned this with zero budget. With zero budget. Farmer Yuba, so nobody was bankrolling you. Nobody. Please, he deserves a better round of applause. Pharmacists are wonderful people. Pharmacists are wonderful people. Thank you. Please note that 
This gathering today is the mid-year meeting, fourth public lecture, and plenary section. Very important. Immediately after all this, we are going to break out into sections for the plenary section. This is very key. While we continue, I want to quickly recognize the presence of the wife of the chairman of the board of fellow, Mrs. Ada Gazu. She is a pharmacist by induction, no doubt. Am I right, sir? <laughs> Thank you for the support you are giving, Oga. Um, I think they said beside every successful chairman is a woman. There is a chairwoman, both at the BOF and in the other room. Ma, please, can you come to the high table to sit? Please, can you come to the high table? Ushers, please. Usher, please. <laughs> please sit next. While recognizing the beautiful wife of the chairman of the board, a fellow, the President Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria just walked in. The President of Farm, <laughs> Professor Cyril Usifo. You are most welcome, sir. We recognize the presence of the former BOF Chair, Dr. John Nwewu. Nwewu. Pardon me, I'm using my Igala tongue. Pardon me. Dr. John Nwiwu. If only, if only I grew up in the village. We are very close to the Igbo people. Unsuka, close to Orokam. Pardon me, sir. You are most welcome, sir. We also recognize the presence of Professor P.F. Oluniola. You are most welcome, sir. We recognize the presence of Farm Sa Deji or Shinoiki. You're yeah, welcome, sir. These are very, very senior members of the BOF. You are recognized, sir. Further recognizing in our midst important pharmacists, our own national secretary of the PSN, his principal just walked in. So we want to recognize the presence of Prince Benga Falabi, the PSN, the national secretary of PSN. Welcome, sir. You're welcome, sir. Also in our midst is the former deputy president south of the PSN in the person of pharmacist Ejiro Foyibo, FPSN, you're welcome, ma. You're most welcome, ma. Present also is the former deputy president, not of the PSN, pharmacist Idris Pada, FPSN. You're welcome, sir. Pharmacist Pada? My own daddy in the house. I will never fail to welcome him. Our first PSN president in Abuja, the first fellow from Abuja chapter of the PSN, our own pharmacist, A.R.M. Mamadou, FPSN. Sir, so you're very welcome. You're very welcome, sir. Also recognizing the presence of the chairman of the ACPN in the person of pharmacist, Enedio Amade DC Farm. You're welcome, sir. We recognize the presence of while she sorts that out, 
I want to recognize the presence in our midst of pharmacist Kunle Tometi, FPSN, representing NAPSA all the way from the United States of America. You are so welcome, sir. You are very welcome, sir. We recognize the presence of TPL Olutoyi Anide, town planner Olutoyi Anide. You are welcome, sir. We also recognize the presence of town planner Nathaniel Atebije. Did I pronounce it well? Ooh. Oh, Atebije. Yeah, welcome, sir. We recognize town planner Barnabas Atiyaye. Town planner Eric Mbakan. Engineer Oguche Amodu Innocent. You're welcome, sir. Mrs. Farida Belo. You're welcome, ma'am. We also recognize the presence of Reverend Engineer Aliu Akinshikwe. Fellow Akinshikwe, you're welcome, sir. We recognize all everybody here present, other pharmacists, other professionals. You are most welcome to this media meeting and plenary section of the Board of Fellows of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. You are all welcome, sirs and ma'ams. Also in our midst, because honor should be given to him, honor is due. We have in our midst Hajia Wasila Adgiwa, FPSN, the former vice chairman of the BOF. Hajia, you're welcome, man. Also in our midst is the one we call Mommy, Pharmacist Elizabeth Odili, FPSN. You can tell she's a mommy indeed. Pharmacist Mrs. Uku Victoria, former ALPS National Chair, immediate past. Also in our midst, AIG Pharmacist Emeka Okeke FPSN. I want to acknowledge him because he's always at these occasions very well represented by himself. Pharmacist Brigadier General Ibrahim Babangida, FPSN, retired. He's in the house. You're welcome, sir. Sitting beside him is one of my other daddies, retired from civil service but not tired. Pharmacist UD Sambo, sir, I will not fail to mention your name. A retired deputy director from the FCTA. We recognize the presence of Dr. Mrs. Tawa Idubo. PhD, FPSN, former PSN inter, uh, internal auditor, former PSN national financial secretary. Ma, you are most welcome. Please, we'll keep recognizing us. We'll keep recognizing. But very quickly, to save time, would now go back to our program on page 13. We'll be having the opening remarks by the Chairman, Board of Fellow, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Farm Dr. Joel Adagadzu. You're welcome, sir.
good morning. Say good morning. <laughs> Last two weeks I was in Lagos. I said last two weeks. Can you hear me? Yeah. Last two weeks. I'm using the. I'm not using my mouth alone. I'm using the. Mouth. <laughs> this is supposed to be an NF, NA, NAF uh, conference center. I don't know why the speaker. Can I have another one, please? Something. Another mic. Another mic. Another mic. Mm -hmm. Hello? Uh huh, that's better. <clears throat> I want to start by thanking God for this wonderful day. As you are aware, this is my first media meeting as chairman of the Board of Fellows. I want to appeal if you want to clap, I want you to clap very well. <laughs> Today is our day. Feel free. We are not just here to meet. We are here to socialize. We are here to meet one another, see ourselves, and feel free. As we grow older, there is a need for us to have these kind of events so that we see ourselves, we encourage ourselves, we try to live long. Let me welcome all of you, and I want to start by thanking the chairman of the occasion, uh, our own prince, Clem Agba who is here ably represented by his SA, uh, a very interesting person, somebody I've met just today, but he has already made an impression in my life. That is Dr. Philip Obodaga. He is the SA to the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. He's here representing our chairman of today, the prince himself. Now, let me quickly also recognize the guest speaker. The guest speaker, if you go through his profile in our program, you find that the man is loaded. He's a special person, somebody that we had hoped to see physically himself here today because we wanted to pray for him. Uh, he's unable to come. We suspected he would be very busy and our suspicion has come to pass. But he has sent his partner, not partner in the sense of just being partner, but partner from right his, from his loins, his own son, you know, and uh, the son is here, Madhu Jogari is a lawyer himself, he's a partner to his father, and they are running a very successful legal practice here in Abuja, and they are known all over the country. I want to welcome you. Now, let me quickly thank the President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, my own dear brother, a professor, a professor, uh, not of professors, but a professor of uh, uh, outstanding dimension, Professor Cyril Osifo. You are welcome, sir, FPSN. I was told you were on the way, and I was praying that you come in time for us to start this meeting together. Thank you very much for coming, sir. You made us, but I'm also your chairman now. <laughs> now, let me quickly in, uh, recognize the immediate past chairman of the Board of Fellows. She's been here since yesterday. I sent her a little gift to the room, but I never saw her till this morning. So the first thing I did was to apologize profusely for not uh, contacting her at least for not saying welcome before our meeting this morning. She has been variously introduced here. And the lady from Akwaibo was able to pronounce her names very well. I don't want to go through the entire names. Let me just stop by saying Professor Mbang Femi Oyewo. Please put your hands together for <laughs> M MFR, FPSN. See, there are some of us who have long, long titles. You have to bear with us. <laughs> I want to also quickly recognize all the past chairmen who are here. Chairman of board. It's our day. All the past chairmen of board of fellows who are here. 
I can see Dr. John Wu. I can see who again? That's about all. Oh. Please be upstanding, sir, for recognition, sir. It's our day. Of course, I want to quickly also recognize all the past presidents of the PSN. All the past presidents. Ah, one is just walking in. <laughs> just at the right time. You're welcome, sir. I think I should shake hands with you. <laughs> because <laughs> if, if you had become a presidential uh, <laughs> candidate, it would have been a thunderous ovation here. You. But you're welcome, sir. You. you did well, sir. You did well. Thank you, Thank you very much. Now, there are so many, so many dignities here. We are going to have time to recognize all of you at our meeting tomorrow. But perhaps before I continue with my short speech, I would like to recognize the team that I work with. And um, if they are here, the neck of the Board of Fellows, please be upstanding for recognition. Neck, Board of Fellows. Thank you very much. You can be seated. And of course, all those who are members of the planning committee, the central planning committee, please be upstanding for recognition. Members of the planning committee. It's one of the committees that I set up since becoming chairman of board of fellows. I was hoping that at this meeting, when I get to know every other person, you can be seated, please. I uh, will be able to set up additional committees to help us run the affairs of the Board of Fellows. Now, I have a special interest in what is going to happen in JOS at the end of this year. And I know my elder brother from JOS, Lawrence Boyer, is here with his team. They've come to start planning or to continue with the plan to host us in JOS in November this year. Because of that special attraction, I mean attachment that I have with JOS, I would like to invite them to all be standing. Those from JOS who will be hosting us in uh, November. And I think I'm doing this jointly with the support of the president of the PSN. JOS, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You may be seated. Now, if I say I should go on, I will be in trouble. So let me quickly a few things, and then I'll sit down. Like I said, tomorrow is going to be a day of meeting. During the meeting, we can discuss as a family. Today, we have visitors. And among the visitors are some of the professional uh, representatives of the professional bodies in Nigeria. Some of them have been uh, uh, introduced. I know from the town planning, engineering. Please be upstanding again for recognition. All of you who are from the prof other professional bodies. Thank you very much. Thank you. You may be seated, sir. Today's lecture is for every one of us, not just pharmacists. And we chose somebody that we believe will deliver on the topic, on the theme of our of our public lecture for this year. We are looking forward to a situation where the government of this country, the government and all those in authority, we are looking forward to a time in this country where they will concentrate on identifying people that are qualified, who, who merit being used for national development. So my first appeal is to appeal to the government of the Federation, to appeal to all those in authority. I don't know what our guest speaker will be saying or telling us, but I want to make that appeal very, very clearly. Please, 
those, the press, make it loud and clear. We are appealing to the government of the Federation and to all those in authority, even in the states. Please, please, we have so many qualified Nigerians, pharmacists inclusive, who are available and ready to serve this nation. It, the governments should look in their direction. The government should look in their direction and do the needful. We look at just a few of us here. Look at the array of people we have here. And I'm sure there are others who are listening online. And I hope the online uh, participants are on too. Are we together, my friends there? Uh -huh. We're appealing. We cannot waste this generation of resources. We cannot. We cannot afford to. So if there is any takeaway from today's meeting, public lecture, is this very strong appeal that I'm making to the federal government, to the state governments, and to all those in authority. And I want to also appeal to the professionals themselves. If you are hidden, try to come out so that people will see you. If we are not being invited, let's invite ourselves, force ourselves to be reckoned with. We cannot allow this country to go down the drain. We cannot. So I'm appealing. And I believe that at the end of the meetings we will be having by tomorrow, a strong note will go out to the government to remind the government that we are there and we are ready to serve. Can somebody clap for that? Yes. The other point I want to make, which is very important, the pharmaceutical industry is a very important industry in this country. Sadly, because of the economic situation in the country, we are unable to make progress in that area. If for the past 20 or 30 years, we are still producing at 30% capacity, then something must be wrong. A child that is not able to grow for 30 years should be examined. And I believe that the industry, as vital as it is, the government should pay attention to the industry. I've said times ten number since I became chairman that I work closely with the uh, leadership of the PSN to see how we can work to develop policies, policies that will support the industry. After all, the industry is responsible for supporting us in everything. Without the industry, we'll probably not be able to be here. That's the truth. PSN goes to the industry. We in the board, we go to the industry. Apps goes to the industry. All the groups. And I don't know how they are surviving. But to all our industry uh, chieftains who are here, I don't know whether some of them are here. I'm sure you'll be recognized later. To all the industry chieftains, I want to assure you that the board of fellows, with all this array of people, will work hand in hand with you to support you we want to work. If you are successful, we shall be happy. Because you provide us with funds to hold meetings, to do some of the programs and projects that we aim, we have in our, in our this to, to do. Projects like the drug abuse campaigns, you know, projects that will support the young ones that have been trained in the universities. We are looking forward to getting more support from the industries. But they cannot do more than they are doing now because of the situation they are facing. So two messages, one to the government, and one is an appeal to all those who can support the industry to make sure the industry survives. Now, I look forward to the, chair, the guest speaker to advise us, to tell us what, how he thinks that fellows of professional bodies will be able to add to the development of this country. And I know there will be questions and answer sessions. And after that, those of us who are fellows of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, as part of the innovation we have brought in, will sit in groups in this room and come out with resolutions as to what we think we can do as fellows so that we can attract the patronage of the government and those in authority. It will just be about one hour session. 
but the recommendations from the syndicate groups will help us a lot, especially those of us who have elected to, to work as the neck, so that we will be able to achieve something with the three, within the three years that you have allotted to us. I believe that something good will come out of this meeting. And I thank you all for coming. We thank God for joining masses. We pray that this meeting will be about the best. I look forward, for instance, to the uh, cocktail dinner today. The Abuja chapter has assured me that all of you will be well treated and that those who have not been able to make it will live to, <laughs> not to regret it, but they will, their absence will hurt them for a long, long time to come. So please, you are here not to come and remain gloomy, taciturnic, but I appeal to all of us, this is our first meeting this year. Let's get together, eat, drink, and be merry. And let's make sure that by the time we get back, we are so refreshed. And those of you who are here without your wives, when you go back, within these two days, your wives will say something has happened to these people. And then, of course, those of us whose husbands are not here will also see the difference. I do not want any complaint. Nobody should complain. If there is any problem, swallow it. Just be merry. <laughs> Just be merry. Once again, I thank you. I have seen uh, my, my, my senior and prof, Professor Lunonia. He has been here. He called and said he was going to come. Pao Shinoiki is here. I was looking forward to some elderly uh, fellows who have always, you know, supported us. But because of some logistic problems, they are unable to be here. But they are here with us in spirit. I want to thank all of you. And I pray that God will keep you and we shall draw from your fountain of wisdom so that we will also be like you one day. I want to live to be 80, 90, if possible, just like them. And I, I believe that is the prayer of all of us here. And we pray that we live those ages in good health. Thank God for joining masses. Enjoy yourselves. I don't want to talk too much in the spirit. <laughs> in the spirit. <laughs> In the spirit of my president, I have learned so much within these few months. When he stands up, you know what I'm talking about. He will greet us and he will go and sit down. So I want to take my seat. Thank you very much. Can we give a louder round of applause, please? That is a handshake from a past to an immediate. I don't know whether I mentioned my wife. No. <laughs> I did not do so, and I don't want trouble. <clears throat> so, <laughs> it's not always that my wife comes out for events like this. Whereas we are growing older, the bond is getting stronger. <laughs> Please put your hands together for... She's, if you see me looking any way, if not for her, I will not, you will not recognize me. <laughs> so I really want to thank you. Before all these people, I want to appreciate you. Thank you very much. They are calling him back for some other things. Has he said it? He hasn't said it. <clears throat> I will stand before her and tell her that I love you very much, my dear. <laughs> I'm not confused. <laughs> that is a very confident man who can stand in the midst of his prayers and tell his wife, I love you. It's a confident man. Can we give a round of applause again? And we all know that if the man goes out and the, man, the woman in the house has not sanctioned the going out and then when he comes back, it will not be the same as when he left. Do we agree? Yes. Yeah. I think some men agreed. Some men who are brave will agree with me. Yes. At this point, I want to specially recognize, he walked in when the speech was going on, but officially to welcome to our midst, our immediate past president of the Famosca Society of Nigeria, Mazi Sam Uhabumwa. You're welcome, sir. FPS.
he has returned to us he, he has returned to us from his political foray which i know he's going to step out again next time his excellency also in our midst is francis ken honorable the chairman of niap you are welcome sanaib industrial pharmacist I also want to recognize pharmacist Dr. Chijioke Onya, who is in the past chair of the West African Postgraduate College of Pharmacy. He's in our midst, the Nigerian chapter. You're welcome, sir. In our midst also is the representative of the Director of Pharmaceutical Services in the FCTA, pharmacist Boniface who is the director. But representing him here today is pharmacist Friday Ali. You're welcome, sir. Another mommy in the house. I met her some time ago when we had an elders, um, elders, Abuja Elders Forum, and I admired her so much. Pharmacist Mrs. Obey Obey, FPSN. Mommy, you're very welcome. We look up to people like you. You know, when you still come out strong this way as we progress in years, that's an encouragement. I also want to recognize. Um, in our Miss Pharmacies, Adekun, I've recognized him. Adekun Letometi, I've recognized him, sir. Yes. I also want to um, offer the apologies from the Esu Karo. He was supposed to be one of our royal fathers today, but word was passed across to us that he's unavoidably absent. He sent his apologies. He was sent on an assignment by the governor of his state, Masarawa State. Thank you very much. At this point, um, we are supposed to have a presentation by Fitzin Healthcare. Are they in the house? Fitzin Healthcare. Fitzin Healthcare. If you are ready, pharmacies Edwin and May supposed to give a presentation. Fitzin Healthcare a pharmaceutical company that distributes pharmaceuticals, and they have collaborated with the BOF, the planning committee, and they are sponsors of this day's program. So please, if they are ready, can they please come up for their presentation? Pharmacist Edwin Ame. Okay. Technology is a funny thing, you know. When you think you have it all sorted out, you find out that there's one thing or the other that you have not worked on. Fitzing is having a technical hitch with the system, and so while they tweak with it and get it all ready for us, we'll continue with the program. We recognize in our midst from Emeka Duru, Immediate past National Secretary, PSN, SSA for DG Son, is here representing the Director General of Son. You are welcome, sir. Also in our midst is Farm Dr. Kingsley Anubo, FPSN, former National Chairman, AHAP. You are welcome, sir. Fits in, are we ready? Fits in, are we ready? If Fitzin is not ready, then we'll move on to the next. As men of honor, the house is so quiet. As men of honor, 
our BOF chair said something. He said, please, we are going to relax. We are, going to, we are not going to be scowling. We are going to be free. We are going to enjoy ourselves. Yes, it's a lecture, but we're also supposed to gain something from it. So I'll say, turn to your neighbor and give them a smile, the widest smile you can give them. The widest smile you can give your neighbor. I can, that some smiles are not forthcoming. It doesn't matter. Just give them the smile. You take a cue from our chairman. He's, he's not just smiling. Thank you very much. At this point, I've been mandated, and it's my honor to invite to the high table our own immediate past president of the Francisca Society of Nigeria. Sir, so please, you're invited to the high table. Can we give him a round of applause as he comes up? Mazi Samoha Bunga, His Excellency. His Excellency. Forgive me. Forgive me. His Excellency. Also asked to come up to the high table is the chairman of the conference planning committee. I expected him to be a very busy man, but I was asked to ask him to come to the high table. Pharmacist Tanko Ayuba, can you please come to the high table? Thank you very much. You're all welcome again. I stand corrected and uh, I've harnessed some elderly potentials and my chairman. You know, you know, our immediate past president, I don't know, he used to wear so many caps, but now he has resorted to wearing just the green cap. And you know, his movement was making waves until the money bags took over. You should have given them drugs, sir. <laughs> Apart from being a Muslim politician, I was taught, <laughs> I was taught, I was told that I should have used my position to change the names of the delegates. And I said that was criminal. But that was what some of, the, some of them did. This country is in their need of change. And unfortunately, those who have the capacity to make the change are normally not the ones who move forward. But there should be a revolution. And I hope that pharmacists will be part of that revolution. Our immediate past president started that revolution. And I know that there are many amongst us who have the potentials who can change the narrative. The immediate past president was also a past chairman of the board of fellows. And I think that should be recognized. That was what I was saying when I meant he was wearing too many caps. Thank God, sir, that you now wear only one. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Why we still await fits in? The IPC has asked me to move on. So we're going to have the pharmacy anthem. Up apps. Up apps. This is what we enjoy doing. Leading the men. We are all men of honor, but we love to lead when taking the pharmacy anthem. So please, shall we be upstanding while all the Appians in the house lead us with the pharmacy anthem? Shall we all be upstanding, please? Pharmacy anthem. Non-pharmacists can sit down, please. Should sit down. So at the count of three. One, two, three, go. 
We pharmacists, we're proud of pharmacy. We members of the glorious PSN. Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. As men of honor, we join hands for pharma. Pharmacists. Drug making, we are there. Dispensing, we are there. Counseling, we are there. Logistics, we are there. Drug advice, we are there. Just name it, we are there. Nigerians, we are there. Thank you. The pharmacists are dynamic people. This information is for the other professional bodies in the house. We are dynamic people. We are everywhere. Even in the banking sector. Education. Just name it. Telecoms. We have evidences. And when they go there, they make waves. I'm proud to be a pharmacist. Please, a round of applause for everybody. While we still wait for fifth scene, I have the honor to invite the president, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Farm Professor Cyril Usifo, FPSN, FPC Farm, to the podium to give us his remark. I am longing to write a few things down in my note as the speaker talks about harnessing the potentials of fellows of professional bodies in Nigeria for national development. I know the pharmacist perspective. It will be interesting because the non-pharmacist will be telling us something about the pharmacist perspective. The chairman of the occasion, the guest speaker, the chairman of BOF, PSN, and indeed other NEC members. My past president, ably seated, who I call living ancestors. My grandmother told me, if you don't know where you are going, you should know where you are coming from. And I do, as your president, know where I am coming from. In a special way, I would uh, want to recognize the chairman of my board, Dr. John Alpha, chairman of Tybrid. And uh, I'm happy that he's much more with us now, and he's doing quite a lot. without wasting much time on protocol, but let me single out my young prof there who is an autogonarian with my papa here, Shonaike. You will continue to live and continue to give us advice to move on in pharmacy. For me, as an academician, it becomes very interesting knowing that I'm on but I will not forget to recognize my teacher. She says I embarrass her a little bit, but I will continue. <laughs> my, my teacher, the mini past chairman of BOF, for the sound teachings you gave us in IFE, we will not forget such type of things because uh, it leads us and makes us to do quite a lot of things. At a moment like this, I get worried because there are some of us who are board of fellows, members, who have loved the spirit of self-esteem, as the BOF chair said in his speech. And many have chosen the path of silence and have remained as onlookers on the affairs of the profession and the nation. Indeed, even if you are not so old, what goes on in the country 
can make you a little bit sad, but you must be prepared. It is not looking back, but looking forward. And that's why this topic is very apt. As you work closely with us in PSN, we will reawaken those fellows who have lost interest in the happenings around them. And indeed, for all pharmacists. I went by saying that we need to challenge ourselves and make ourselves very relevant in the matters of, the, of, the, of this country. That's why I, I praise my immediate past chairman, Mazi Samohambowa, for taking the challenge. It is not that the Chinese proverb says, when you have a journey of a thousand miles, somebody says, taking the first step. For me, it is finding your sanders. Sir, you found the sanders for us in pharmacy, and we are very proud of that. As far as I'm concerned, you won because you've shown the path. And many pharmacists, from all indications, actually stepped out into politics. Some won their primaries, some are in the business of making sure and planning for the next uh, four years. Pharmacists do, not, do have a significant role to play and contribute to the development of this country. I will encourage you, I will encourage myself, we need to brace up to do the right thing at the right time so that we will not just be relevant in this country, but our network will be honored. Thank you very much. Please, a better round of applause for the President Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria for his remarks. Very brief, but then very loaded. I would describe his remarks the way my sweetheart oftentimes tells me to talk when I'm in a public function. He tells me when you're in a public function, make your speech as short as the ladies' mini skirt. Short though, but long enough to cover the essentials. Am I talking to the board of fellow members? <laughs> so a better round of applause for the PSN chairperson. Fits in, are we ready or we should go on? With your permission, Ma, can I go on? Thank you, Ma. So we're going to have the speech delivered by the chairman of the occasion. The chairman of the occasion will be introduced by no other person but Farm Chief Yetunde Murundia. She is the vice chairman, BOFPSN. And she is the Mayegun Obiri of Ila Onogun. Ma, you are welcome. Thank you. Oh, yeah, Mario. Thank you. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I stand on the existing protocols, but I give due respect to the high table. Um, the chairman of today's occasion is a thoroughbred Nigerian. He's a prince from Auchi Kingdom in Edo State. He's a... Um, from his citation, a very brilliant Nigerian. He has a BSc in economics from the Bendel State University, now Ambrose Ali University. He has two master's degrees. One is from, from the University of Benin, and that's a degree in business administration. And he has another one from the Arizona State University with specialization in supply chain and management. The chairman has had a good working career in the public, organized public sector. He retired from Chevron in the year 2019. He has also been in the public service as commissioner for environment and public utilities, land and survey, land survey and housing from 20. 2008 to 2016 in Edo State. He has honors and recognitions 
as of Fewosi of Uneme land, and more recently, he was honored with the title of Oduma of Auchi Secret Kingdom in January 2022. He is happily married with children and grandchildren. It is my very singular honor and absolute delight to introduce Prince Clem Agba, Minister for the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Very ably represented by Dr. Philip Ugodaga, Special Assistant. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ma. Uh, for those of you who know the Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, uh, you know I'm not the one. <laughs> he's, uh, he's more handsome, he's richer than me, and then he's my boss. The Chairman of Board of Fellows, of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Pharmacy Chief Joel Adagazu, PhD, and of course, his neck members, the President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, PSN, Professor Cyril Osifo, the guest speaker, Today, the very well respected um, SAN Gazama, who is uh, here very well represented by his partner, who is also his son. And when the chairman of the board of uh, fellows spoke, he mentioned the fact that it was time for pharmacies to be recognized politically in Nigeria. You cannot be recognized if you do not step out. And that is why I want to very respectfully recognize our very chief, double chief. Uh, I'm aware he wears very many caps, but he's wearing the green one today. Chief Sam Ohambuwa. Uh, for some of us, we have read about you. We've been following you. And they were very proud of the hope that you offered for Nigeria. Unfortunately, the leadership recruitment process in Nigeria is highly faulty, and we need to do something about that so that people like uh, Chief Sam Ohambua will have the opportunity of learning from and benefiting from their leadership. Finally, I want to recognize and appreciate the SA note of the Chairman of the Board of Fellows, Madam. You are very well recognized. When the Honorable Minister of State got the invitation for this program, he immediately requested that I should do a letter of acceptance to the Chairman of the Board of Fellows. It imitated him of his preparedness to be personally here. And I did that letter on his behalf a day or two after we got it. Unfortunately, the demands of the office of the minister has taken him to the villa this morning and he requested that I should represent him. He said his very warm regards and that he's put down his few thoughts which I will read on his behalf. While the voice will be mine, the thoughts that I expressed in this short message are those of the Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. <laughs> Before I go on to do that, I want to very specially recognize my, my good friend here, uh, Pharmacist Ejiro Foyibo. She's uh, my good friend and um, we were both at the University of Benin. In fact, we entered the University of Benin the same day. 
I, I can cite you and I recognize you. It gives me very great pleasure to be with you to chair the fourth public lecture of the Board of Fellows of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, PSN. Especially as the body is known to be committed to the advancement of pharmacy for the health and social well-being of Nigerians. Let me especially thank you all for the invitation and to commend your efforts in making the 2022 public lecture a reality. As you are all aware, the Board of Fellows is a body of distinguished pharmacists who have excelled not only in the practice of pharmacy, but in other fields of endeavor. The Board of Fellows, in advancing the pharmacy profession, encourages pharmaceutical education, research, and scholarship, and promotes very high ethical standards in the profession. Over the years, as I'm, I'm aware, this public lecture has provided a very, very table platform for the public and private sector actors in Nigeria to brainstorm on socioeconomic and contemporary national issues. The theme of this year's public lecture, which is harnessing the potentials of fellows of professional bodies in Nigeria for national development, the pharmacist perspective, is very apt and aligns with the country's current national development plan 2021 to 2025, which identifies the challenges of inadequate professionals and especially brain drain in the medical and allied professions. The civil ladies and gentlemen, health statistics shows that the Nigerian health system is still very weak, despite significant progress that we have recorded in recent years. The average life expectancy of Nigeria still stands at 55 years as of 2020, and infant mortality rate was 72 per 1,000 live births during the same period. The major achievement of the previous plans, especially the Economic Recovery and Growth Plan, ERGP, 2017 to 2020, in the health sector was the declaration of Nigeria as polio free in 2020. Significant progress was also made in the fight against measles and yellow fever, as well as HIV AIDS. In terms of GDP, Statistics show that the pharmaceutical industry directly contributed 686.5 billion era in 2021. This represents 0.535% of nominal GDP, or about 2.5% of manufacturing value added. In 2020, Nigeria import, imports of medicinal and pharmaceutical products were valued at US $3.1 billion against $1.5 billion US dollar in 2019. The sector reported a double digit growth of 10.33% in the first quarter of 2021 against 8.13% in the same period in 2020. The outlook in growth in pharmaceuticals is expected to continue to trade upwards going forward. The civil ladies and gentlemen, the National Development Plan 2021 to 2025 has identified the challenges in the health sector which needs to be addressed to improve health outcomes. These challenges are mainly structural in, in nature and represent a significant economic burden impeding the country's inclusive growth and human development aspirations. Notably among them are inadequate health care financing. Inequalities in distribution of health resources between the urban and the rural areas. Lack of qualified personnel and equipment for quality health services. Brain drain of medical professionals in search of water, better work conditions and remunerations. Low employment-based health insurance. Weak governance and policy implementation combined with limited data available, available for planning and decision making. Large population side, putting a considerable strain on health facilities, and finally, inadequate attention on mental health. Going forward, therefore, and taking cognizance of the challenges, the National Development Plan 2021 to 2023 
a vision that every Nigerian should live and sustain a healthy life with dignity. The plan will therefore pursue the following under, uh, overarching objectives. Develop integrated health system through public-private partnership. Extend universal health coverage to cover one quarter of the population by 2025. Ensure availability in sufficient quantity of quality essential medical personnel, medicine, and medical supplies. Promote healthy habits, healthy behaviors, and lifestyle across all stages of life. Reduce infant and maternal mortality rates. The Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget, and National Planning is ready to partner with the Board of Fellows of Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria and other professional bodies to ensure the effective implementation of the National Development Plan 2021 to 2025 on health. I therefore enjoy you to take advantage of the en enormous untapped opportunities, especially in the areas of e-health technologies to revolutionize healthcare management and delivery system in Nigeria. The high proportion of the population with access to mobile phone provides an excellent opportunity to the profession and practice of pharmacy to provide improved health services to the people. Your association can create electronic software application to meet the National Development Plan targets for health. And we are prepared and ready to partner with you in this regard. There are also opportunities for profession in the area of an increased use of analytics and artificial intelligence to streamline and improve drug distribution and clinical services. The concern we have on medicine security can also be addressed by your profession. The huge import base on medicine and pharmaceutical products together with the low share of pharmaceutical industry in GDP is a call on professionals or profession to devise means to increase research and production of medicine and pharmaceutical products using look, our local raw materials. I assure you that we are committed to working with the Federal Ministry of Health, the PSN, and its Board of Fellows, as well as other stakeholders to reposition the health sector in Nigeria. This is, ladies and gentlemen, I am confident that the outcome of your fourth public lecture will assist the government in the effective implementation of the National Development Plan 2021 to 2025 and the accompanying policies. I am happy that the fourth public lecture covers a wide range of subjects which are relevant to the regulators, planners, and other issues in the from a school industry. I wish to employ you to participate actively and make useful contributions that will enhance the outcome of this public lecture. And we are ready and waiting for the communique that will emerge from this outing. I wish you very fruitful deliberations, and I thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you, sir. Please, a better round of applause while he goes back to his seat. We can do better. Thank you, Dr. Philip Ugbodaga. That was a speech well delivered. In the course of your speech, you made mention of the pharmacist you know from Uniben. Please, I finish from Olabisi Onobanjo, under Professor Femi Oyewo. And my name is Pharmacist Eliojo. Dr. Philip, now you know me. In the course of his speech, he said they were ready to partner with BOF and PSN on health. Professor Isufo, please, I hope you heard that. Let's take advantage of that. BOF chairman, please, let's take note. The duration is 2021 to 2025. Let's take advantage with respect to e-health, as he rightly said, and delivery system to Nigeria. We appreciate that, and we will not let it slide by. Please give him another round of applause for that partnership. 
I want to recognize the Director, Head of Department, Food and Drug Services, Federal Ministry of Health, Abuja, Farm Mrs. Aribiana Olubumi, ably represented here by Pharmacist Ologun Taye, Director of Pharmaceutical Services Division. Farm Ologun Taye, please. You are welcome, sir. I want to recognize the presence of my very own, always fighting me. He's obviously jealous of me. Farm Festus Isenriere, FPSN, Coordinator BOF, Abuja and Nasarawa State. The chief host for today. You are welcome, sir. I also want to recognize Farm Bode Adeoye, FPSN, the LOC chair. Thank you, sir. Fitzin, are we ready? If yes, please come have your presentation. And to anchor this presentation is Farm Edwin Ame. I have 20 minutes for your presentation. You're welcome. Permit me to stand on the already existing protocol. Good day, everyone. I'm pharmacist Ame Edwin Ojila from Fitzing Healthcare PLC. I'm here to make a presentation on osteoarthritis. We titled it Getting Your Active Life Back with our wonderful molecule, Atoke. So um, a brief overview of my company. Um, Fitzin is an indigenous company. It's owned by a Nigerian, so it's for us all. Um, we are an industry leader, and then we are into uh, manufacturing and marketing of pharmaceutical products, fast-moving consumable goods. We are ISO certified, and over time, I know you would have come along one or two of our products like Astimin, Astifa, Ima Injection, and a whole lot of them. And you agree with me when I said we are tested and we are trusted. Um, a brief overview of what we are going to be looking at today um, is osteoarthritis, the classification, the core defects, risk factors, pathophysiology, differential diagnosis, impacts on the quality of life, then the treatments, the objectives, and the treatment options that we have available. Atocare and atocare fault, the key constituents in this wonderful molecule, the indications, the dosage, and the unique benefits that it offers to us and to our patients. Then we can draw our conclusion. So um, osteoarthritis is characterized by a breakdown of joint cartilage, now making the bones to rub against each other, therefore resulting in pain, stiffness, and over time, inability to even move your joints. Um, commonly affects are the weight-bearing joints, like the, weight, weight of the joint of the hip, the knee, and the ankle. Then oftentimes, we can see it manifest in the joints of the fingers, and that's mostly in women. Now, it's ranked the most prevalent chronic joint diseases, and prevalence increases with age. So mostly, it's a disease of the age. So as you get older, it's expected that over time, you can come down with osteoarthritis. Now, it's ranked um, among the leading contributors to global lived years with disability. Because of the inability to move your joints over time, then you now see a lot of older patients uh, getting disabled and inability to move. Um, Osteoarthritis affects about 60 to 70 percent of persons greater than 60 years of age. The global, global prevalence rates are 9.6 percent in men and 18 percent in women, which means that it affects actually more women than men. But variations may exist in different populations. So what we can get in Nigeria may actually be slightly different from what we can get, let's say, in South America, for example. Now, now part of the um, Part of the risk that are actually associated with this particular disease is um, loss of the functional ability, the low quality of daily life, and then dis disability in old age. So um, there are classifications um, of osteoarthritis, and osteoarthritis is classified as primary osteoarthritis or secondary, depending on whether the osteoarthritis is as a result of um, a 
a, an impending injury or diseases condition. So the primary osteoarthritis, there is particularly no predisposing factors as why the patient is presenting with the osteoarthritis. And then, and this is the more common form of the osteoarthritis that we have available. Now it affects uh, people greater than 40 years of age where there is no previous pathology. And that's why it's called primary osteoarthritis. So mostly it's not like it's predisposing um, to a particular disease. It's associated with aging and then risk factors include gender, genetics, obesity, and etc. So in secondary osteoarthritis now, we have the osteoarthritis presenting secondary to a particular infection or injury. And that's where we have the previous joint disorders, congenital hip dislocation, infection like the septic arthritis, inflammation like the rheumatoid arthritis, metabolic disorder like gouty arthritis, then the occupation or posture. So um, the difference and the distribution. So if you see, you see around the joints that we mentioned, mostly the weight-bearing joints, which is the joint of the hip, the, the knee, and that of the ankle. Then oftentimes, you can have it manifest in the joints of the fingers, like I've rightly mentioned. And that's the um, pictorial evidence to um, show where and where you can get this um, osteoarthritis. So the breakdown of the articular cartilage, then mainly by the action of the enzyme, the metalloprotesis enzyme, and the interleukin. So these enzymes are actually implicated in the breaking down of this articular cartilage, but the breakdown and the synthesis occur simultaneously so that there will be a balance, but at any point that the breakdown exceeds that of the synthesis, then we begin to have these cases of osteoarthritis. So at times, the growth of the osteophytes, like bone protruding into the um, joint spaces also can make movement difficult and then patient presenting with um, this case of osteoarthritis. So now the susceptibility, um, hereditary, so if you have um, a parent um, that actually have this case, then you know that you are at risk of having osteoarthritis. The gender and the hormonal factors, like we said, that is more common in women than we have it in men. Obesity, um, high bone mineral density, trauma, joint space, alignment. Some people actually see them with bow legs or knock knees. So these are um, uh, risk factors for patients coming down with osteoarthritis. So um, the protective structure of the joint, this is the way it looks like. And this is the articular cartilage that actually prevents this bone from rubbing against each other. And this is the ones that actually get degraded by, by the action of the metalloprotesis enzymes and the interleukin-1. So this is where the bulk of the osteoarthritis comes from. So when this articular cartilage, the rate at which it degrades, exceeds the rate at which the synthesis is happening, then you begin to see the bones beginning to get exposed. And once they are exposed, they can come in contact with each other and start rubbing against each other. So in our other slides, we are going to be presenting a normal arthritic a normal bone, normal joint, and then an arthritic um, joint. So um, the pathophysiology, now cartilage consists of um, extracellular matrix and then chondrocytes. Now this chondrocytes usually synthesize the type 2 collagen and the proteoglycan as well as this particular enzyme that is implicated in the breakdown of this articular cartilage. Now the body responds by releasing um, inhibitors of this metalloprotesis enzyme so that the rate at which the degradation is happening can actually be slowed down. But further release of this enzyme and the interleukin now leads to cartilage degradation and the synovial brain membrane um, inflammation. So the pathway to the pain, like we know, so from this breakdown now um, leads to the arachidonic acid and then from there now you can either follow the cyclosigenes one pathway and the cyclosigenes two pathway. The cyclosigenes two pathway is actually the one that brings about the mediation of pain. So um, this is um, the picture of the normal um, uh, joint and then the arthritic joint. So you can see um, the articular cartilage there in the arthritic joint now being depleted. So a lot of them have been degraded and then the bone is actually being exposed. And over time you see them rubbing against each, each other as compared to the normal um, joint that we have the articular cartilage in place. So um, part of the clinical symptoms of osteoarthritis, now there are clinical signs that when you see this, you're actually suspecting that the patients actually might, might have um, present with osteoarthritis. And part of them is the pain, stiffness, and muscle spasm, which is like the hallmark of the sign because most of the patients, they won't actually know that this degradation is even happening until they start presenting with these pains around the joint. Then restricted movement, deformity, muscle weakness or wasting, psychological distress due to persistent pain, joint efficient crepitus, 
and joint enlargement and instability. So there are differential diagnoses to differentiate the three um, major arthritis that we have. That's the osteoarthritis, the rheumatoid arthritis, and the gouty arthritis. So this um, differential diagnosis exists so that you can actually differentiate which one is presenting in a particular um, patient. So for example, um, if it's a degenerative um, um, pain that the patient, uh, the degenerative um, kind of the arthritis, then you know that it's osteoarthritis. If it's something that has to do with inflammation, you know it's rheumatoid arthritis. And it has to do with uh, metabolic, like the uh, metabolism of uh, proteins, for example, then you know it should be gouty arthritis. So these are the differential diagnoses. So um, the impacts of osteoarthritis, especially on movement and sleep. Now the risk force due to risk of force due to um, pain joint instability, alter gait, and aging. So you see, at times, these elderly patients, even when they are walking, they can just fall as a result of this pain. So when the pain becomes unbearable, you see them falling to um, different sides. And some of them, even in climbing stage, you see them falling from those um, staircases. Now, 80% of patients or people with um, osteoarthritis report difficulties with activities of daily living. So you see, um, normal daily life actually um, includes that you move from maybe go to bathroom, go to um, kitchen, and so but all these movements and have become difficult. So their normal daily life activities have been impacted by this osteoarthritis. And then over time, you see some of them, when it becomes critical, you see them missing even their uh, work that they do. So then the pain and loss of functionality increases dependence on others. So because you cannot find it, you can't move easily. Even when, let's say, there's a water there, you have to send somebody to help you get the water because of the pain you are going to experience if you want to. So about 31 to 41 percent of patients experience anxiety compared with 17 percent of all types of anxiety in general population. So over time, when this happens now, you begin to feel, get these anxiety feelings. You are always scared because of the pain that you will feel if you move your body or try to make a movement. And then patients with painful, com um, painful complaints experience a high level of um, sleep disturbance, poor sleep worsens pains, and then can increase distress. So um, the impacts on the social life, you see patients that experience exacerbated pain and joint instability, those finding regular physical jobs very difficult. And then social isolation due to pain and disability may also precipitate depression. Some even have um, a problem with their sexual life because um, during um, sexual performance, for example, and then you might just be thinking, what if I move this my joint now and I begin to feel one kind of pain or the other. So it has an impact on even the sexual life. So um, the treatment objectives that we have, the number one thing that we want to do is to relieve pain and swelling because that's what brought the patients to the hospital or um, the pharmacy in the first place. So anything that you are doing, so far the pain is not gone. To the patients, you've not done anything. So the number one is to relieve that pain and swelling. And then to prevent disability, improve quality of life, prevent the progressive diseases processes, and then preserve and restore joint functions. And that's where this our wonderful molecule comes into play because most of the available agents are actually able to take care of the pain, but the slowing down of the disease progression and the restore of the normal joint functions are not actually seen with the normal painkiller medications that we have. So the treatment options include the oral systemic drugs, the hyaluronic acids and glucocorticoids, the topical and dharma agents, analgesic and anti-inflammatory, then chondroprotective, which is where our agents also fall, and then intraarticular agents, and then anti-inflammatory agents. So from the table of fixing healthcare PLC, we want to introduce to you our own unique molecule for the management of osteoarthritis, which is um, atocare and atocare fort. So atocare and atocare fort, we are going to see the constituents. So the ingredients in atocare are glucosamine sulfate, 250 milligram, chondroitin sulfate, and um, 200 milligram. These those these um, strengths are actually doubled in the atocare atocare fort, which make atocare fort suitable for um, the management of somebody that are already presenting with osteoarthritis. Why the atocare is for prevention. So you will see aside the glucosamine and the conductrin sulfate, other ingredients have been added in the auto care fort, like the MSN, the methylsulfonylmethane, which is a potent um, source of sulfur in the body. And we all know that sulfur is a potent um, analgesia in the body. So this actually helps to relieve the patients of the immediate pain. And then the additions of vitamin E, boras, and manganese, which are actually um, potent antioxidants because redu reductive oxygen species have been implicated in 
breaking up the rate at which this degradation happens in the articular cartilage. Now, the glucosamine acts as a preferred substrate for the production of agricans of articular cartilage. So this glucosamine now is like a substrate that will ensure that we have um, synthesis of this articular cartilage in the body. And because these agricans make cartilage more hydrophilic compounds that enhance their synthesis are beneficial in the management of osteoarthritis. Glucosamine has also been demonstrated to reduce this prostaglandin E2 production, thereby reducing pain. Then the chondroitin sulfate. Chondroitin increases synthesis of the hyaluronic in the synovial cells. It increases synthesis of both the uh, collagen and the proteoglycan, down regulates the activity of these enzymes that actually helps in the degradation of the articular cartilage. It limits cells that reduces generation and increases the scavenging of these reactive oxygen species that have been implicated. So, um, the methylsulfonylmethane, like I said, is a potent antioxidant and it has um, this uh, analgesia property. So it can actually um, help to reduce the patient's pain. So the um, indications are the articular, like I said, is for prophylactic treatment of persons with five weeks of having osteoarthritis, why the articular effort is for management of mild to moderate um, osteoarthritis. So the articular effort can be given two capsules twice a daily, preventive dose, and then the articular effort is given one couplet three times in a day. So some of the unique benefits of these wonderful molecules that I've mentioned, I would like to retreat, analgesic and anti-inflammatory activities, potent antioxidant activity, increased synthesis of conductrin and bone matrix, Proven reduction of symptoms and severity of osteoarthritis and restore bone levels in arthritic bone. That's with the um, care fault. So, um, in conclusion, osteoarthritis precipitates joint and instability, force and functional inability. Patients are also at risk of having anxiety, sleeplessness, and depression. Then, care and care fault can help relieve the uh, patients of pain and swelling, prevent disability, and restore joint function. So, I want to urge you all that um, when we come along with patients presenting with these um, conditions that we mentioned, that we can do it to recommend this wonderful molecule for the benefit of the patient. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Pharmacist Edwin Ahmed. I think it's apt that Pharmacist Edwin came to us with auto care. As we all get, as we mature, I tell my children I'm maturing. You can't turn around and tell me I'm getting old. No, I'm maturing. So as we mature, our bones are getting, you know, in a certain way. So for as many of us as are maturing, we have heard from Fitton this morning what it is that we can do to help our bones stay strong. And he mentioned something about the other room. Um, he mentioned something about the other room, and he has said, Atoke can help you. We all know that there are other things that can also help you in the other room. But we'll stay healthy, and then um, we'll do the needful. Thank you very much, from Edwin. Can we give him a round of applause? At this point, if you check your time and you check our program, we're actually running, we're ahead of time. So we have quite an amount of time to, you know, get to know ourselves better. And um, I want to recognize the presence in our midst of pharmacist Alhaji Muniu Ilelu, FPSN. He's the program director of the PSN Foundation. In the past, deputy president not of the PSN. So you're welcome. Now, like I was talking about technology and IT and all that, this meeting is a hybrid meeting for those of us who are not aware. It means that as you're here, your colleagues outside of this space are also in attendance today. And amongst them are Elder Ebenezer A. Adeleke. Can we give him a round of applause? He will see us clapping. He will see us clapping. Also from the USA, is Mazi Bruno Wankwa. He's also joining us online. And our very own past PSN president, Alhaji Ahmed Yakasai, MNI FPSN, is also joining us online. Can we give him a round of applause? It's good to love the profession. Even when he's unavoidably absent, he's able to join in. Media, I don't know, can we get them? Ah. They show very good. You see, as I'm backing the thing, that's why if there was something coming from there, I would not even have known. But I'm sure other persons would have told me. You're welcome, sir. Can he see us? 
Give him another round. Let him know we are clapping. Ah, Claire Mache. Right. Please give her another round of applause. I loved her presentation at PSM conference. Um, well, not Alps. It wasn't Alps. No, it wasn't Alps. It was PSM conference. He bad done. Yes. The one about disruptions. We went away disrupting things all around the whole place. And I hope we are still disrupting things. Because that year was a wonderful year, at least for me. So these times when we gather for these kinds of talk, let's not just come and just walk away. There are a whole host of them. Wow. Great. So they are all welcome. I also want to welcome those that are present here physically. Some more persons. I am from the PSN Abuja chapter. So I will not fail to welcome my PSN chairman, the man in the red cap, pharmacist Ifani Kebudu. He has removed his red cap. He's never without his red cap. Maybe because he saw some elders with red caps. And you know, there are levels to red caps. So the younger red caps have buffed their caps for the older red caps. Can we appreciate him for being a responsible and respectful young man? Also in our midst is pharmacist Dr. Dorothy Okwa, FPSN, Country Director, Howard University. Ma, you're welcome. You're welcome, Ma. She's been encouraging me with her eyes and her smiles all this while. I'm so grateful, Ma. Okay, now we'll go into goodwill messages. We have some invited unions, associations, bodies, professional bodies that were invited, and they were so kind to honor the invitation. And so I think we would like to hear from them. We would like to hear from them. So, Chairman, sir, if you permit me, sir, I want to invite the representative of the Nigerian Society of Engineers to please come forward for his goodwill message. After that, the representative of the Nigerian Institute of Town Planners follow immediately after. And then Nigerian, now these ones are our own, the ones that came from very far. So I will not put them now. Let our invited guests, let them come forward. Representative of the Nigerian Society of Engineers in the house, thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yeah, standing on the existing protocol, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Engineer Uguche, Amodu Innocent. Uh, permit me to quickly align with my sister, Eleojo. She's my sister in the house, and I'm a prince from Igala land. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, before I continue quickly, I would like to appreciate uh, this body to see the importance, the relevance of engineering in their profession. To have invited us, we are glad. I stand here in the capacity of my, our board chair, uh, NSC, Nigeria Society College of Fellows, and on behalf of the entire body, Nigeria Society of Engineers. Having said this, uh, we looked into the entire arrangement, and uh, of course, there is so much to learn. You know, learning is a continuous process. We come with a lot of things, all so much we have from our profession as a civil engineer, and I see a lot of things that we can actually do together. And uh, this body, not forgetting this, the, um, uh, the inevitableness of this profession in alignment, they have invited us. We want to say big thank you to the organizers. And um, having said this, I want to specially thank the body uh, the organizing body in particular for the way and manner things have been presented. I've uh, been opportune to attend several uh, programs like this, and I think I'm picking something special today. And uh, from the lessons that is being learned, and so much that will be coming on board, because yet we are yet to get the lecture itself, and I know the lecture is uh, lessons packed, 
so we are all ready to take so much home. And I want to say that uh, from the few things we have learned, there is so much we will be taking home. As a board member of my own enviable society, Nigeria Society of Engineers, I know there is a lot of improvement we are going to take from here to see what we can do at the other end. Thank you very much, and God bless us. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me start by saying that I am here to represent the Nigerian Institute of Town Planners. I am Tony Aide, uh, the national president. We got. Thank you. I'm glad that your financial secretary is not here to collect money for applause. You know, people are usually afraid to clap because the financial secretary may want to collect money. So I was in Abuja last week when the invitation came to my table. I, I think it got to my table before I got to Abuja, but I saw it when I came in last week. And when I saw the topic, harnessing the potentials of fellows of professional bodies in Nigeria for national development. I told my first national vice president, who is the incoming president by November, that, you know what, we have to come here. And the reason is that only a few weeks ago, our own fellowship selection committee was sitting to interview new fellows. And as president, I was there with them, and I wanted to set a tone for how our new fellows come. And I was saying there's need to conduct an orientation for fellows of the institute. And I wanted them to start it. It's never been done before me. So, so when I saw this, I said, I'm coming to learn something from here. So, uh, permit me to recognize Mazi uh, uh, who is president Association of Corporate Governance Professionals, right? You had a program in Lagos and I, I was invited. Yeah, because my wife belongs to that association. And also president Pharmaceutical Societies of Nigeria who just a few weeks ago was chairman of the planning committee of the young professionals program that we had in APBN. Uh, he was ably represented by his vice president, Dr. Ibuna. It was a successful program. Thank you. So I said, it's our pleasure to be here. So when I saw that invitation, I said, we have to come. And that's why we're here. We find the topic attractive. And then I had to call the secretary of the board of fellows and ask if I could bring with me three other people. And he said yes. So we were actually four that came, but one of us had to leave for another meeting. Uh, that just shows that we are here to learn. Uh, so thank you for your, your warm reception, Chairman, because as I came, I walked into his warm embrace and Professor from a year old. The truth is, the progress of every nation resides in its professionals. And I used to say this as chairman, Association of Professional Bodies of Nigeria in Lagos State, before um, Babatunde Raji Fashola invited me to serve in his cabinet. Check what a country is doing to its professionals, and then you can read the trajectory of that country. So every country we have seen that made appreciable progress listen to their professionals. But when those in government are wiser than their professionals, things will always end 
in confusion. And I think that's the reason why this is very important. And I must say that professionals must continue to engage themselves. I tell people, and I used to say this as chairman APBN, that professionals, all professionals are like five fingers of a hand. If you think one is not important, just cut it off. And it's the day that you need it that you realize that you committed a serious error. The input of that finger you may think is very little, but it's also very significant. So my belief is that fellows have a higher calling than other professionals. Fellows are meant to be the elders. Fellows are those who get midstream and they can't look back for any reason that they want to get back. You know, so I thought it was good to come here and listen to uh, this lecture that I've, I'm sure will be, will be challenging. We're hoping to go home with lessons and we look forward to the triumph of professionalism in Nigeria. I bring you good wishes of the entire members of the Nigerian Institute of Town Planners. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you very much, Town Planner Ainde. You're very welcome. And pharmacies, you can see that we are blazing the trail. Are we trailing the blaze? No, we don't trail. We, bla we, we do what? We blaze the trail. And they have come to learn from us. We have a board of fellows that's already very established. And therefore, we have a lot to teach all those who want to learn. At this point, it's my honor to call on Pharmacist Adeleke Tometi, FPSN, former president of the Nigerian Association of Pharmacies and Pharmaceutical Scientists in the Americas for his goodwill message. I thought we'd be clapping. Now. Let me thank you very much for this opportunity. I'd like to make some corrections. I am not the former president of NAPSA, although I shall be very shortly. <laughs> I have two personal experiences I want to talk to. Firstly, uh, it's my first uh, year of being a fellow of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. It is, in fact, uh, my highest calling as a professional and uh, I've always wanted to be one, so I want to thank the Board of Fellows and the Privileges Committee for uh, recognizing me and making me a fellow. Uh, unfortunately, every time I'm being asked to do something, I, I always go the extra mile and assure that I do it and do it perfectly. And that is why today is a call of duty for me and responsibility to the high office of a fellow that I flew all the way from Texas to be here for this two-day event. <laughs> Secondly, uh, I represent uh, our association, NAPSA, uh, on the neck of the PSN, and uh, I can also draw inference that even at the Board of Fellows, I represent NAPSA. I want, <laughs> I want to assure you that we're very committed to the partnership and the progress uh, of uh, our relationships. Uh, this topic today uh, really speaks to me uh, because we have a lot of uh, very, very good professionals, very uh, uh, well uh, achieved Nigerian professionals abroad. And I believe uh, I set an example by making sure that people come home and contribute their own quota to the development of the nation. And I thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you, Farm Adekunle, for the goodwill message. Very quickly, I want to recognize the presence of Farm Professor Michael Adiku, FPSN, former VC of University of Abuja. You are welcome, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, standing on existing protocol, I want to remind us that we are all here 
for the 2022 mid-year meeting, fourth public lecture and plenary section of the Board of Fellows Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. Please give yourself a beautiful round of applause for being here today. Clap for yourself. You're not clapping for me. Clap for yourself. It's a fantastic opportunity to be here. I'm not a fellow. I'm a very, very young pharmacist, a pediatric pharmacist, but I'm privileged to be here. So please do well to give yourself a better round of applause. As men of honor, as men of honor. So for the big reason why we are here, pharmacists are always ready to learn. I have the singular privilege to bring to the podium the person that will introduce the guest lecturer for today. She is no other person than Farm Dame Ungozi Obikili, FPSN, FPC Farm, and FNIS. She is the General Manager, Corporate and Strategic Planning, Nigerian Port Authority. Pharmacists are dynamic, they are everywhere. Please, a beautiful round of applause for this beautiful treasurer, current treasurer of the Board of Fellow PSN. Ma, you are welcome. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Your Excellencies. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I stand on the existing protocol, and I'm to present the citation of the guest speaker today on the topic, harnessing the potentials of fellows of, potential of professional bodies in Nigeria for national development. Pharmacist perspective. Chief Joe Kerry Gazama, SAN, FCI AB, a distinguished recipient of two national honors, officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and member of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He obtained his LLB degree from the University of Medugri in 1985 and was called to the Nigerian Bar on 16th of October, 1986. He was appointed a notary public in 1996 and was elevated to the rank of senior advocate of Nigeria, 12 years in the bar. He was the first member of the Nigerian Law School set of 1986 and the first practitioner from the entire Northeastern region of the country to be elevated, elevated to this prestigious rank. He is the founding principal partner of J.K. Gazama LLP. In furtherance of an excellent legal career trajectory, he obtained a diploma in international arbitration from Kev College, Oxford University in 2006. He also attended the Institute for Public-Private Partnerships, Arlington, USA in 20, 2009. And he also underwent a short course on regulation at the London School of Economics and Political Science. In recognition of his strong anti-corruption track record, he was appointed chairman legal team of the EFCC and chairman national working group on the Rome statue constituted by the office of the Honorable Attorney General of the Federation. His vast experience in litigation and commercial law has aptly earned, earned his law firm some of the biggest transactions in the country. And he has been involved in litigations that have opened new frontiers in the legal system of Nigeria. For over three decades, Chief Gazama, as the lead counsel of Gazama & Co, has been an external solicitor to several commercial, development, and industrial banks with partnership, with retainership, as an advisor 
to major multinational corporations, indigenous companies, and a network of high network of uh, individuals. In terms of litigation, he has been the lead counsel to INEC and major political parties in the country. Until recently, Chief Gazama was a federal commissioner, board member of the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission of Nigeria. He was a board member of Diamond Pension Fund Custodian Limited and board member, University of Benin Governing Council. Chief Gazama is a chartered arbitrator and a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Afro Arbitrators and the Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators. He has featured on who is who legal as an arbitrator expert. Listed below are these uh, professional and leadership services. He has been past chairman, MBA Abuja branch, past chairman, Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, Council Member, African Bag Association, Council Member, Institute of Chartered Mediators and Conciliators in Nigeria. He has been Council Member, Governing Board of the African Bar Association. He has, is also a fellow of several organizations, which include fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Chartered Arbitrators, Fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Services, Fellow of the Institute of Chartered Mediators and Conciliators, and the Fellow of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators. Please give him a round of applause. He's also the chair, he's also a member of Lincoln's in UK. He's a member of London Court of International Arbitration. He's a member of Center for Effective Dispute Resolution. He's a member of the Nigerian Commission International Chamber of Commerce. He's a member of Governing Council of the Dispute Resolution Center of Abuja Chamber of Commerce and member national committee on the reform, harmonization of arbitration and ADR laws in Nigeria. He's also a member regional center for international commercial arbitration. Standing on the existing protocol, your excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I hereby present to you Chief Joe Kerry Gazama, who is ably represented today by the son, Madu Joe Kazama. Madu Joe Kazama is an LLM holder, is a member of Chartered Institute of Arbitrators, is a member of the Institute of Chartered Mediators and Conciliators, He's a partner of J.K. Gazama, and he's a member of Lincoln's in UK. I present to you our guest speaker for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. As they often say, if you see the son, you have seen the father. <laughs> Muhammad Musabello, Honorable Minister, FCT, Abuja. Dr. Osage and Henry Ray, Honorable Minister of Health. Prince Clem Agba, Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. The Chairman of the occasion, ably represented by his essay, Dr. Philip Ugbodada. Her Excellency, Mrs. Dame Pauline Kedem Talon, OFR KNG, Honorable Minister of Women Affairs, Farm Professor Cyril O. Usofo, FPSN, FPC Farm, the President, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, and members of the EXCO, Farm Chief Joel E.B. Adagzu, I, uh, forgive me, 
PhD, FPSN, FPC Farm, the Chairman, Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, and members of your neck, His Royal Majesty Al Haji Adamu Baba Yunusa, Honor of Abaji and Chairman, FCT Council of Chiefs, who is the Royal Father of the Day, alongside His Royal Majesty Farm Luca Panya Baba Esukaru, also Royal Father of the Day. Farm Ibrahim Tonko Ayuba, FPSN, the Chairman, Planning Committee, and members of his uh, Planning Committee, the immediate past president of the PSN, and a past BOF Chairman, Chief Sam Ehambua, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, the immediate past chairman of the BOF and the wife of the chairman of the BOF, past presidents here present, past chairman. I bring you greetings from Chief Jokiari Gadzama, senior advocate of Nigeria, who is unavoidably absent. He sends his best regards. Uh, as some of you may know, is contesting for the office of the president of the Nigerian Bar Association. I'm not here to campaign, but I'm just letting you know that he is, <laughs> he is away uh, attending another event in Eckert and Oyo. Uh, for reasons best known, he has sent me to represent him. He values the society. And just like Dr. Phillips said, as soon as he received the letter, he instructed that we write and accept so he's really sorry he could not make it physically. Uh, before I head uh, into the subject matter, I just wish to make a couple of remarks. Um, I particularly loved the presentation by Fitson. I am a young man, a very young man, but I've been developing some issues. <laughs> yes, so I don't know if you noticed, I was really jutting when the presentation was going on. And... I know without, without being a member of your society, I know about collagen and glucosamine because I've been buying a lot of drugs. So it was very entertaining. It was very, a very good presentation and I'm definitely going to invest. So that's, that's on, on, on a side. Um, I also got a couple of take homes. By the grace of God, if Chief Gazama becomes the next president of the Nigerian Bar Association, we're also going to have our anthem. I really enjoyed the, the anthem. <laughs> There was a part where, where, I think you mentioned, just name it. Yeah, it was very, very lovely. Very lovely. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. Uh, as men of honor, or should I say, as you are men of honor. Then I, thank you very much. <laughs> okay. So just as uh, Dr. Philip said, um, uh, you may be hearing my voice, but everything contained in this paper are the thoughts and comments of Chief Jokari Gazama, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. I consider it a rare privilege to present a paper at this gathering of distinguished pharmacists themed harnessing the potentials of fellows of professional bodies in Nigeria for national development, the pharmacist perspective. I acknowledge and commend the industry of the organizers of this event and the fellows of this profession for their innovation, as well as their choice of the theme, which I consider apt, progressive, and laudable. Professional bodies are organizations that act on behalf of the interests of those working within a particular industry or speciality and the public interest. Such organizations aim to maintain control and standards of the particular industry that they oversee. The ultimate role of a professional body is to represent the interests and needs of its members. However, the roles of professional bodies differ and are influenced by the type of professionals that they oversee. For example, pharmacists, medical practitioners, dentists, lawyers, we had to sneak ourselves in here, agriculturists, journalists, engineers, etc. Membership of any professional body gives you access to membership benefits specific to that institute. It is an undeniable fact 
that professional bodies in Nigeria have contributed to our national development and beyond. Yet, members of these bodies have not fully utilized their potential due to so many significant factors. This paper will attempt to deepen our understanding of ways to harness and exploit the potential of members of professional bodies in Nigeria for national development with a specific focus on the pharmaceutical sector. Utilizing the potentials of members of professional bodies in Nigeria, the pharmaceutical sector for national development. Now, this is a trending issue that is being discussed daily in different forms by different classes of persons from day to day. This is a result of the current situation in Nigeria, which calls for concern. Coincidentally, I will be speaking on the subject at a gathering of lawyers today at Eket, Akwaibom State. National development is a concept that largely depends on the economic, social, and political development of a country. Therefore, the all-round development of a nation is compulsory for it to achieve national development. Generally, the nations of the world can be classified into developed, developing, and undeveloped. Most countries in the African region, including Nigeria, fall into the classification of developing nations. Typically, a developed nation is characterized by the availability of basic amenities, high income per capita, high gross and domestic product, high level of security, high literacy level, high human development index, and constant food produce supply, among several other factors. Without a doubt, Nigeria falls into the category of a developing nation due to the lack of basic infrastructure and amenities, high level of insecurity, lack of access to quality education and medical facilities, and low income per capita amongst other indices which contribute to it being described as developing. It is safe to say that as a country, we have not successfully addressed the root factors impeding us from attaining national development. According to Professor Akpan Ekpo, a professor of economics, bad governance is the main reason why the various national development plans failed to deliver on the objectives of massive employment and improved economic development. Noting that Nigeria scores very low and was below countries like Ghana, Benin, South Africa, and Egypt in the six major governance indicators, Professor Ekpo asserted that good governance propelled by transformational and visionary leadership is what ensures that national development plans are effectively and efficiently implemented. He added that the prevalence of bad governance in Nigeria is manifested through political instability, widespread violence, corruption, ineffective government institutions, poor regulation, as well as absence of rule of law. Going to the pharmaceutical sector in Nigeria, this sector in Nigeria is made up of the academia, administrative, regulatory, community, which is the retail, industry, and hospital practice areas. Its practice includes modern services that are related to healthcare, clinical services, providing drug information, and reviewing medications for safety and efficacy purposes. Administrative pharmacies in Nigeria work with a variety of administration roles in hospitals, health institutions, and government organizations. The sector is regulated by the Pharmacist Council of Nigeria, the PCN. It is a body established by the law governing the pharmaceutical sector in Nigeria, Pharmacist Council of Nigeria Act, which regulates members of the profession. Reference in the paper is made to section 1 sub A to E. The council is responsible for controlling and regulating pharmacy education. The standard of knowledge and skills of individuals seeking to become pharmacists, maintaining the register of persons entitled to practice as pharmacists, and inspecting, approving, and licensing pharmaceutical premises. It further organizes mandatory continuing professional development, the MPCD, for pharmacists in the country. On harnessing the potentials of members of the PCN, 
The ways to harness the potential of members of the PCN for our national development include, but are not limited to the following. One, promotion of pharmaceutical homemade drugs. In 2019, the National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control in Nigeria introduced the five plus five year validity in bracket migration to local production policy in support of producing essential medicines locally. In line with this policy, as of 1st May 2019, a newly registered imported product is given a maximum period of 10 years, broken down as five years of initial registration plus another five years of renewal registration to migrate to local production. The essence of this policy is to encourage domestic manufacturing of pharmaceutical products and support market growth. This policy will decline the shortage of essential medicines promote pharmacists to use their potentials in conducting research for new medicines, decrease the importation of drugs, and create employment opportunities where young and old fellows of the profession can benefit and further enhance their potential. It is an undeniable fact that the manufacture of drugs in Nigeria is on the decline. The main reasons for these are infrastructural challenges, like lack of consistent energy supply, as well as inadequate financial support to the up and coming pharmaceutical scientists. The COVID-19 pandemic should be an eye opener for the need to equip pharmacists to exploit their potential in both research and manufacturing areas. And though we do not pay for another pandemic, we should, however, prepare for how to protect the nation. This is also an opportunity for drug manufacturers to pressure the government into doubling efforts to ensure local drug manufacturing. Dr. O.K. Akpa, while reiterating the need to promote homemade drugs, stated as follows. The pharmacist said Nigeria must prioritize the local pharmaceutical manufacturing industry and treat it as a strategic, as strategic rather. He explained, we say so because within a population of over 180, million people and growing at about 3%. Medicine security is a must for Nigeria to achieve. The industry, apart from playing this key role of guaranteeing access to quality and affordable medicines on a sustainable basis, offers one of the most robust value chain. This brings with huge employment opportunities, foreign exchange earning capacity, industrial and economic development. This statement shows how pertinent it is for locally produced drugs to be promoted because it will help members of this sector to exploit their potential and further create employment opportunities in this field. This will go a long way for the nation's development and stability. Now, on proper enforcement of policies to punish fake drug producers or unlicensed producers and distributors, Enforcement of laws and regulations for the sale of medicines can improve pharmacy practice to a large extent. Fake pharmacists and pharmacists must be checkmated and properly prosecuted. The National Drug Distribution Guideline, the NDDG, should be properly enforced as this will help in the closure of all open drug markets and the relocation of the stakeholders operating in the markets to the coordinated wholesale centers, the CWCs, which are regulated entities within the second layer of the framework for drug distribution as approved by the Federal Ministry of Health. Adulterated drugs are gradually overshadowing the original drugs in Nigeria. This is a common fact. This is adversely affecting the production from licensed producers as the profit made has become very low and discouraging to them. They are discouraged from exploiting their potentials in the production area as adulterated ones mix up with their own and devalue their own. Therefore, checkmating and prosecuting fake producers and distributors will encourage the licensed ones to be more productive and make a profit as adulterated products will not reduce the profits of those who labored for them. It will further encourage members of the profession to utilize their potential and the best results as this will greatly improve and be of great impact 
to the pharmacy practice on incentives from the government. The government should provide incentives for its local pharmaceutical industry in support of the country's effort to diversify its economy. Also, if the federal government provides a pharmaceutical expansion, expansion fund, this will help stakeholders ensure that facilities meet up with the World Health Organization's pre-qualification and standards. This incentive should also extend to research and discoveries by pharmacists. The government should be able to commend the efforts of those who have put in efforts to make discoveries. Nigeria is a country blessed with thousands of medical herbs. This will be an opportunity for fellows of the profession to exploit their potential in their research on herbal medicines for disease management and improve access to medicines. Further, the reduction of tariffs payable by local manufacturers is pertinent as this will serve as an incentive to them. The high cost of production makes it impractical, impract, no, wow. <laughs> impracticable for local manufacturers to compete favorably with drug importers. In some cases, as observed in the prices of selected medicines surveyed with the checklist, prices of some locally manufactured drugs are equal to or higher than those imported at the retail level where, fin where final consumers procure. If there is a drastic reduction in the cost of production, there will, be, there will certainly be a reduction in the price of drugs, as this will make fellows of this profession have leverage over imported drugs. Customs believed that the tariff on unfinished pro products should be lower compared to finished products to encourage local production as guided by the Nigerian tax policy and customs books. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control and Pharmacists Council of Nigeria has been making meaningful efforts to ensure and encourage local drug production. Both organizations should do more, especially in getting the government's political commitment to encourage local drug manufacturing. Now, on mandatory continuing professional development, CPD programs for the pharmacists. Nigeria is saddled with some challenges in the pharmaceutical sector, both in terms of the number of pharmacists as well as education and training. According to the International Pharmaceutical Federation, FIP, though pharmacists' numbers have increased globally, however, much of this growth is in the World Health Organization's Eastern Mediterranean region and the Euro European regions. Growth in the pharmacist capacity was lowest in low-income countries and the African region, sadly. There are huge gaps and differences in the way pharmacy is practiced across the globe. It has been discovered that pharmacists engage in other CPD activities apart from the PCN NCPD program. The essence of this program is to update their knowledge in the field. It focuses on trainings, seminars, workshops, etc., related to pharmacy, general healthcare, and also association-related activities. The CPD activities that most pharmacists engage in are the PSN annual state conferences. The PSN conferences are recognized by the PCN MCPD for garnering credit points to meet the required number of credit points in a cycle to satisfy recertification requirements. These programs help them to gain more knowledge and further equip their potential some of these programs should be free, as this will be a way to empower them. On specialization, every profession is moving towards specialization as this, as a matter of fact, is a way forward for professionals. Just like the legal profession, many have specialized in corporate, litigation, arbitration, etc. This is also applicable to the pharmaceutical sector. Mohammed. Elijah stated that the generalization of pharmacy practice is no longer in vogue. This is because specialization will make you become a consultant. You will be an expert in specific areas. So as a specialist, you will have the requisite knowledge. Specialization is now the future of pharmacy as this will enable our healthcare system to meet the mandate of controlling costs by improving 
medical outcomes. The role of specialization for pharmacists cannot be overemphasized as it makes them gain mastery of the area of specialization and further ensures that their potentials are harnessed properly. On training of pharmacists in clinical skills, vaccination, minor ailment schemes, and categorization of medicine, proper training of pharmacists in these areas can enable them to exploit their potential and equally help in the healthy development of the nation. It is thought that pharmacists can play an increasingly important role in providing care for minor ailment schemes, chronic disease management, as well as in providing vaccination. The way forward is that the government must involve pharmacists, bottom line, medical laboratory scientists, and other health workers in primary health care services in Nigeria. Effective categorization of medicines can be made into prescription medicines, pharmacies only medicines, over-the-counter medicines. The importance of categorization of medicine cannot be overemphasized, as this will enable pharmacists to be more involved in the health sector and further unleash their potentials in this area. Prescription medicines are to be sold by prescription from doctors, as we all know. Pharmacies only medicines can be dispensed without a prescription for minor ailments from a pharmacist, while over-the-counter medicines, OTC, can be obtained without a prescription generally. Thank you. I take down as my own point to cite the paper. <laughs> Welfare salaries. It is no news that most members of the health sector now seek greener pastures in other countries where their potential are fully appreciated. At least about 70% of Nigerian resident doctors and nurses are either on the verge of leaving the country or are writing various examinations to that effect. To them, there is no need to spend the remaining decades of their career in a system that would not profit them and the sector they represent. A physician in Canada is paid $260,924 for clinical services by the government's Ministry of Health per year on average. According to a report from the Canadian Institute for Health Information published in September 2017. On average, a family physician, a family physician is paid $211,717 for clinical services. And the surgical specialist is paid $354,915. These figures were compared to the abysmal poor remuneration of Nigerian doctors, which ranges between 150,000 Naira for entry-level doctors and 500,000 Naira for consultants. Some one of the, show, show one of the major reasons why many doctors are, of course, living, the, living in droves. Therefore, proper steps should be taken to put a stop to the brain drain and ensure that doctors, nurses, pharmacists will no longer find moving out of Nigeria lucrative. Remuneration and welfare salaries should be paid to them as this will help them to explore their potential and use it for the development of the nation rather than taking it to other countries. So we beg the government to do the needful in this regard. Creation of more pharmacies and laboratories for testing and creation of new drugs. The government should invest more in the pharmaceutical sector. The nation has lots of local agricultural products and academic resources which are yet to be tapped into. The health sector generally is lacking development and is incapable of competing with other countries. The creation of more pharmacies and laboratories will open the door for fellows of this profession to utilize their potential and will skyrocket national development in health sector as the development in this area is depreciating. The health sector needs to be developed. The development of the sector can generate at least 30% of turnover labor in the country starting from the farmers on the farm to manufacturers at the industries. Unfortunately, the country is not tapping into this. In presses, permit me to conclude by saying that Nigeria has several professional bodies, and these bodies help in the development of the nation. However, these bodies cannot function perfectly 
or give the best results if the potential of their members is not harnessed or equipped. The pharmaceutical sector is not an exception to this. This sector needs the potential of its fellows to be equipped and exploited, and this paper has highlighted important areas in which the potential of the fellows of this profession can be utilized. While stating that Nigeria is a blessed nation, we need to tap into areas, especially the health sector, for the nation's development. I therefore urge you all to be ambassadors of this profession and be the best versions of yourselves. We need you. Nigeria needs you. The speaker needs you. Thank you for listening. Very good. Pharmacies, we can do better than that. Thank you very much. Truly, we have seen the father as the son was speaking. I had a picture of um, Chief Joe Carey in my head, and the speech flowed into the picture I had in my head. And so I want to say thank you very much. As pharmacies, the government is being called upon to involve not just pharmacies, but fellows of the profession in matters that have an impact on national development. If we want to move Nigeria forward, like our invited guest said, if you don't treat your professionals well, if you don't tap into the wealth of knowledge that they have, you will not be able to do the needful concerning the growth, the progress of your nation. And I hope that the communique committee will pick on one or two things or three or four things from this speech and then we'll take it and run with it as we make presentations to government concerning the practice of pharmacy, the availability of wealth of knowledge and you know by virtue of the number of years of practice of these persons who we have made fellows, when you are made a fellow you are like the, the, the top and so it's assumed and it's observed that you have done the needful, you have garnered all the experience that is required, and you have a lot. A child who does not have a father that helps him, guides him, is a child who will most likely go wayward. But when you have a father who has, by experience, walked the path that you're walking, he will be able to guide you, and you make better progress. So we are asking that the federal government of Nigeria will listen to these things that have been said this afternoon, and then do the needful. We have heard if government commitment in encouraging education is not there, there's going to be a problem. If government commitment concerning reduction of probably taxes and all that for those of our elders who say, you know what, yes, I've retired from civil service, but I'm not redundant. I am not tired. I want to go into, you know, production or something. You set up a group and you come together. Government should be able to put incentives in place such that such groups will be able to thrive even in this nation. Pharmacists, can we please give him another round of applause? <laughs> At this point, standing on all the protocols that are already existing, I want to invite the chairman of the occasion, ably represented by his essay, Dr. Philip Bodaga, to give us his closing remarks. Thank you very much, uh, the Chairman of the uh, Board of uh, Fellows, uh, Mr. President of PSN, um, you will now permit me to stand on the protocol that is very well established. Um, recall that I gave would it be the welcome remarks at that time of the Honorable Minister of State in a written form which I had to read? Uh, so anything I say now 
I'm sure you are going to hold me responsible. <laughs> so I must be I must be careful. Prof said I'm on my own. <laughs> so I'm a, I must be careful because I'm still in a representative capacity. Yes, I want to again appreciate your body. I listened very well when Mr. Chairman made his um, welcome remarks. And he mentioned that uh, one of the reasons why you decided to organize this event is to assuage the feelings of some fellows who were asking what in practical terms they were benefiting from being fellows. I, I must say this, that as fellows of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, you are unlikely to benefit personally because you are now the conscience of the profession. In the legal profession, they call them the body of benchers, where if there are issues, they guide the younger people. I listened very well when people were being introduced. All of you here are either ex that, ex this, former this, former that. So you are all very well accomplished. So your reward is the service that you will continue to give to the younger pharmacists in Nigeria. Like my junior SAN, Gazama Junior just mentioned, the country needs you. I was mentioning to Mr. Chairman a while ago that I believe that at the end of your conference, it is expected there will be a very well-written communique. It shouldn't end at just issuing a communique. That is all we're used to doing in Nigeria. We probably just issue a communique. We publish in our, our journals, maybe the PSN newsletter will carry it. But he should follow up with a visit to the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. Right now, we have a five-year strategic plan for the country, National Development Plan 2021 to 2025. At that visit, I told him I would do my best to facilitate it, that you will appreciate him for coming. You structure out, because he has, assist, he has stated in his um, address, which I've sent to the chairman and the association, that they are open, the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget, and National Planning is open for collaboration. It is your responsibility to find ways to collaborate with the government, put them in a proper way, and come and have discussions. During the visit, and I'm sure there's a desk officer within the ministry that you will be asked to work with you to ensure that whatever you come up with will be followed through. You know who to make contact with and how to follow up. Having said that, I think that our very respected SAN, the lecture was very captivating, and I believe that we have all benefited a lot. Um, putting together a conference is never easy. If you are not in the planning committee, you are an invitee, you just come in here, you don't know how a lot of all these things came to be. I think that the planning committee at the neck of the board of fellows deserve a huge round of applause. <clears throat> Let me also say that the country is in need of professionals. I mentioned that tangentially when I delivered the minister's remarks. Let us not stand back and think that they would come for us. We need to make ourselves available. 
Yes, Mazi Samahambua made himself available. The system did quite appreciate the capacity that he has. But he stood out. If you do not dare, you can never win. But if you try, you can win. And I know that going forward, many more summer humblers will arise, not just from this profession, but from professional organizations. And they will step forward, and the country will appreciate them. That time has come. Nobody ever knew that a day like today will come where the entrance of certain candidates into the political arena will exceed a lot of enthusiasm. But things are changing. The narrative will change. Nigeria is our country. We have no other country. The more people become politically aware, the more our leaders are held accountable. 2023 is close, and it is our expectation that every one of us will get involved. We want the best for our country, the professional organizations, whether it's from a school society of Nigeria, um, the Nigeria Society of, of, of Engineers, the Nigeria Medical Association, and several other organizations are the ones that hold the key to the development of our country. Let us not step by, let us step forth. And I know that Nigeria will not disappoint the black race. We have a responsibility not to disappoint ourselves. We know that the dreams of our founding fathers appear to be floundering, but working together, professional organizations, Nigerians are from all walks of life, we can move Nigeria forward. Once again, I want to thank the organizers for inviting, not me, the Honorable Minister of State for Budget and National Planning to this event. And like I said, he is because, because he's a planner, because the invitation also came well ahead of time, he desires, decided at that time to indicate his personal presence to be here, but fortunately, because of state functions, is unable to, hear, to come here today. I will relay everything that's happened here to him. And um, Gazoma Jr. will also give me a copy of your, of your address. And then, of course, the beautiful bag here, I will uh, carry it and then also deliver to him. Once again, I want to thank you for the invitation extended to the Honorable Minister. He wishes you well. And I know that when your chairman uh, leads the neck and uh, uh, perhaps uh, Mr. President of PSN and the uh, other leaders and elders of the profession, you will have more time to interact. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Philip Ugbodaga. I can see that he's a complete gentleman. He was going to walk up to me to give me the microphone. A round of applause for him, please. We thank you for that closing remark and with the powerful words on marble. That's a big take home for us all. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody that has been coming to this podium today have been standing on existing protocol. I wonder how strong that protocol is. I'm sure by now the foundation must be very weak. So I'm supporting existing protocol. Made the thing for no collapse. Everybody has been standing, standing with their heavy weight. So supporting the existing protocol, I want to remind us once again that we are here for the 2022 media meeting, fourth public lecture and plenary section of the Board of Fellows Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria. And we are glad to have you here. Please, a round of applause for yourself. We appreciate you and we thank you for being here today. Special thanks to our guest of honor. I've been asked to tell you 
that after the lecture, a lot of you probably have questions. Please note your questions, and we are going to bring them to the plenary sections. We are going to collate them, and your questions will be well answered. As men of honor, despite the tight schedule of one of us, she made every effort to be here. We recognize the presence of Farm Scholastica LAN, FPSN, FPC Farm, current National Chairperson, Association of Lady Pharmacists. Ma, you are welcome. Up, ups. Up, ups. You are welcome, ma. Next, we'll be having presentation of. Okay, that's from Scholastic Alan. You're welcome, ma. We appreciate the effort you made to be here, and congrats on your election. Next, we are moving to the presentation of plaques. May I now invite the chairman of the board of fellow, Farm Doctor Chief Jewel Adagadzu to please come forward for the presentation of plaques. <laughs> to be ably assisted by the LOC chair and the BOF secretary, Farm Larry, Farm Lucy, please. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. First, before we make the presentations, I want to thank our chairman of this event, for the patience and for all his ways of encouragement. I can assure you we'll take it up from there. I want to also extend our appreciation. I know the secretary will do the appreciation later, but let me quickly say my own. The guest speaker, we thank you. It was not easy to get you to come and speak to us. We recognized long ago that you are very busy, you are a very busy person and you are out to contest for uh, the, the presidency of the Nigerian Bar Association. So it was even, we were lucky to even uh, get your note that you are going to make, um, appear with us today. So when you, you could not make it, I wasn't surprised. So I want to thank you for at least coming to step into your daddy's shoes. I will personally visit him to appreciate him for this wonderful paper that has been presented. Now, there are some people that have not been recognized. You are all very important. I will recognize you personally at the meeting later today and tomorrow. I will recognize you and I'll ask you to stand up for recognition. I can see <laughs> my sister, the wife of uh, Minister Ogbe, she's here. I will recognize you later. All of you, you are all welcome. You are all fellows and you are all very much recognized. Thank you very much. We have just a few presentations to make, and I would like to call on the president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria to come forward, and the presidential aspirant of <laughs> the People's Democratic Party, uh, they just concluded the primary, to also join him. We are going to make two presentations. One will be made by uh, each, each of the two, to our chairman and to our guest lecturer. Uh, the first one will go to the chairman of the occasion. Mr. Chairman, sir, please step forward. And my president will make the presentation on behalf of the Board of Fellows. You're welcome. I'm sure you would agree with me that Edo State is the heartbeat of the nation. Yeah. I know Dr. Kudaga is from my state. Very well, sir. And Claire Magba is also from my state. Yes, and um, Edo State will continue to beat. And as soon as they have, be always beat. Please to be why. <laughs> On behalf of uh, Bio, the Board of Fellow for Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, we appreciate you and give you this present appreciation award. Um, even if we're going to go to Prince Claire Magbai, 
But as of now, you will hold on to it. And uh, congratulations, sir. Honestly, <laughs> now the guest speaker represented by the Magaji of the Kariu family, <laughs> please come forward, sir, and I will request our presidential aspirant from of the PDP. I'm sure he would like to greet us before he presents. <laughs> PDP, don't you? Mr. Chairman of the occasion, our president, chairman of BOT, past chairman, uh, president of the uh, society, past chairman of BOT, very distinguished fellows, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here essentially to deliver um, our plaque to you for a great job you did. Um, there are sometimes people come in representative capacity and you can't be sure that they will meet up expectations. I'm just telling the chairman before you that both of you really met up our expectations. You delivered it, added some panache, added the usefulness into your, uh, when you said something, is it Nawa or something? <laughs> it's only a young man that can do that. You know, I mean, that was, that was just fun. And elderly person, I felt embarrassed, but you, you added fun to it. So we're very, very grateful. And we want to thank you and thank your principal and your father. Uh, he's a well-known um, attorney, and we're happy that he's uh, wanting to lead the Nigerian bar at this time, that uh, the judiciary needs some bit of uh, support. Uh, I think uh, an MBA uh, led by somebody like him would help to bring the anchor that we need to strengthen the judiciary. So I want to congratulate you and say, keep it up. Uh, this morning, I was looking at the names of those who have been nominated for the sick, and I saw names of uh, children of uh, uh, sons like uh, Agabi's son and all that. So I say, one day, I'll see your name. Congratulations. I want to thank you once again. And I want to thank both the president of the PSN and the presidential aspirant for making those presentations on our behalf. Mr. Secretary, what are they? I think there are other. Actually, only two. Only two. Oh, let me just. Good afternoon, my seniors and my colleagues. We are gradually coming to the end of the public lecture, but like I said in the morning, immediately after the, our guests have left, we pharmacists will remain here to discuss how we can improve on what being a fellow should be or is in the pharmaceutical society of Nigeria. We'll have a group discussions. We'll break maybe into four groups. We have discussions, and then each group will appoint a spokesperson who will come and make a presentation in front of all of us. Then we tally all the points, panel beat them, refine them, and then we send them to the Board of Fellows for implementation. Thank you very much. Please don't leave.
thank you very much, everyone, for your patience. Thank you for having sat through these presentations this afternoon. And thank you for not giving up on us as we went along. I want to invite to the podium this afternoon our own pharmacist, Larry Familosi, the secretary of the BOF PSN. Please, a round of applause as he comes along. Pharmacist, Larry Familosi. Good evening, colleagues. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. <laughs> well, um, before I go, do, I mean, I continue my appreciation. I want to seriously appreciate the professional bodies that are here. We send the letters to them just quite, I think, about a week plus ago, and not quite a day or two. I started receiving calls from these bodies asking for how many members or how many people can they bring. And I said they can bring as many as they, they have because it's a lecture for all professionals. The National Executive Committee of the uh, Board of Fellows of the Foreign School Society of Nigeria expressed our appreciation to our distinguished guests who grace this hybrid public lecture, being the fourth in this series. We really appreciate our eminent guest lecturer, Barrister Chief Joe Gass, uh, Kari Gazama, SAN, ably represented, an erudite lawyer, a seasoned litigation and commercial lawyer, and public defender. Currently, he is the founder and principal partner of JK Gazama LLP. He gave an in-depth, inspiring, and educative lecture on this fourth public lecture topic, harnessing the potentials of fellows of professional bodies in Nigeria for national development, the pharmacist perspective. We recognize and appreciate the role played by the chairman of the occasion, Prince Clem Agba, also ably represented, the Minister of State for Budget and National Planning. We can but appreciate and recognize the sponsor of this fourth public lecture, Pearson Healthcare PLC. The partnership cannot be overemphasized in making the public lecture a great success. Our royal fathers who are unavoidably absent are highly appreciated. Our social guests are highly recognized and appreciated for coming to grace the occasion. On behalf of the Board of Fellows from the Society of Nigeria, Chairman Dr. Joel E. B. Adagazu, FPS and the national executive members and the other members of the Board of Fellows from the Society of Nigeria thank the Planning Committee Chairman Francis Ibrahim Tanko Ayuba and the entire members of the 2022 Media Meeting Dinner, uh, Stroke Dinner Planning Committee for a wonderful job done. We also appreciate the uh, LOC and the Chairman of the LOC Dr. Bode, I think he's still around. We thank you all. The coordinator, Abuja Nasarawa, BOF, we appreciate you all. And we appreciate the press for coverage of the uh, program. In all, to God be the glory for a successful fourth public lecture. Thank you all, and God bless you all. Thank you. Please, another round of applause for our indefatigable secretary. And you must have noticed that we said fourth public lecture. The BOF has been on for long, but why fourth public lecture? This is because the public lecture was introduced during the tenure of Professor Mbang Femi Oyo. You know, women, they like to blaze the trail. Or is it trail the blaze? <laughs> so she's, she has set a precedent and it is being followed and we hope more innovations will come as more uh, future leaders are coming. Thank you very much. I think it's time for us to go into...
Dear fellows, it was my plan that if his daddy had been here himself, having been told that he's contesting for the presidency of the NBA, that all of us would pray for him and wish him well. Are we on the same accord? Do we wish him well? Yes. We wish him well. And we thank all our other professional bodies for coming. We thank you, we thank you, and thank you. Whatever comes out of this our meeting that we come up, we shall share with you as well. God bless you. Have a beautiful uh, afternoon of, of, of discussions. Somewhat a hotel now. What is the order? Group okay. photograph. Okay. Um, okay. There will be some group photographs immediately after. And then while the secretary was giving the vote of thanks, I think it's on a, an oversight. We want to thank those of you who joined online. We want to thank all of you for staying with us from morning till this time. I know you are spending a lot of data, but it is worth the while. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, another man of timber and caliber has just entered. Another man of timber and caliber has just entered. Our former president, Olumide Akintayo. Members of the BF NEC, members of the BF NEC, please come and take picture with the chairman. The Board of Fellows, Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, presents her fourth public lecture 2022. Topic Harnessing the Potentials of Fellows of Professional Bodies in Nigeria for National NEC. Development. NEC members of BF. Next members of BF. Our past chairman and past presidents must be getting ready because our senior colleagues. Members of the CPC, if you are around, please come for a group photograph. 
Ask your mouth, what the fellows? No, Wahala, we'll take. Very nice, past chairman of Board of Fellows. Before CPC, past chairman of Board of Fellows. Before CPC, past chairman of Board of Fellows. No, past chairman of board of fellows, then past presidents. Yes. Yeah, it will be too. It will be too. Just say. Now, former presidents. Past presidents. Past president. Uh -huh, CPC. Then after CPC, representatives of professional bodies who didn't take part in the first picture, should please. CPC members, please. She said something. CPC members. Thank you. CPC members. Hello. Uh, the the members of the high table and the the speaker, the chairman, will tour the exhibition stand. Please, uh, the chairman will lead. We lead the members of the high table. 
is uh, modern. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can we have the chairman of BOF, uh, the members on the right table, the past president, past chairman of uh, BOF, to visit the uh, fifth scene exhibition stand? Please.